So, good morning to another person here. I am very happy and delighted to be here. So, we are planning for this event for the past four days. We are not able to do each and every day some obstacles. So, uh, I prefer to go offline. I prefer to see face to face. Then only we are able to do it. Whether I am delivering in correct way, whether the participant is receiving the same day, what I intention. So, we are facing a lot of difficulty after Corona. So, uh, I am working in uh, IBM as well as I am working in President's University as an Western lecturer. I have around 15 years of experience. Uh, I worked in various institutes in Tamil Nadu as well as in uh, Malaysia. I did uh, full time PhD in Malaysia under the Malaysian Government Scholarship. Then I worked in Delhi for three years, then I came back before one year. So uh, that is my history. I did my diploma, UG, PG, PhD in IT. Uh, and this is very new domain for me. Uh, my PhD domain is uh, cloud computing, multimodal biometrics in cloud computing. So I accidentally saw a video in YouTube about uh, Google quantum supremacy. Uh, anybody heard about this quantum before this? In any form? What do you have in your mind about quantum computing? Exactly. So what are the system we are using? This is very classical. We are using von Neumann architecture for, from past some years. What are the laptop, system, mobile, even server, we are using the same architecture. We are storing data, we are processing, then we are following. Each and every component, okay, we are doing the same process. Okay. It is not fundamentally changed, it is not radically changed, but in case of quantum, it is entirely different. Okay. In the uh, Google video, they demonstrated a very hard problem, very hard computer science, uh, NP hard level problem. They put that problem in world powerful supercomputer. And those supercomputers will take 10,000 years to solve the problem. Nearly 10,000 years. And they put the same problem in quantum computer, they got present within 300 seconds. Imagine, 10,000 years of, uh, years of uh, time is trimmed down to 300 seconds. As a computer science uh, uh, programmer or uh, faculty, we should get inspired because of this concept. So, wherever there is a uh, quicker <coughs> process, they will make quicker uh, profit. So, company always looking for quicker competition. And uh, this is very uh, dynamic. If you compare, compare classical computer, which is based upon electronics, flow of electrons. But here, it is totally different. So, I particularly have found him uh, between IBM. So, IBM offering Quantum Educator, it is a honorary course, so any faculty can uh, approach for this program. It is open, so to approach for this program, you need to create a curriculum, you need to have a syllabus, course plan, you need to update in your website, and you need to share that link with your application. So if you are applying for this course, they will call for you in interview, they will ask, they will discuss how you are going to conduct, how many participants are there, how many enrolled to attend your course. If you are able to clear all these stuff, okay, they will award you IBM quantum educator students. So I got before three years. From past three years, I am offering this course in multiple universities. So this is very good chance to equip ourselves. Okay, I recommend every one of you to apply for IBM quantum educator. So once you got this uh, uh, educator course, they will give everything uh, uh, in hand. Okay, everything free of cost, they will give. All type of resources, how to handle it, okay? how to deliver your lab, each and everything they will get. So next one is I can describe advocate printer. I will describe the uh, storyline. So uh, these are the IBM PC challenges. So these challenges are industry pressing problem. So what are the problem industry looking for? What are the problem industry doing research? They will publicize in online. So anybody above 18 years, they can enroll in these challenges. They can uh, do this. In this challenge, they will give problem statement and they will tutorial. 
how to solve that problem, how to approach that problem, they will give uh, line by line gateways. Okay, then finally they will give problems. So with the help of all these tutorials, we are able to solve that problem. If you are not able to complete also, you are able to know what is the basics, how they are uh, approaching. Okay, so each and everything, scientists and uh, researchers, they will gain. So they have common social media platform like uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. In, in that, they will put so much of questions, they will put so much of answers indirectly. So they will give clue how to solve that problem if you are posting. Your co-learners also will to solve that problem. So once you solve this problem, they will give digital guidelines. Okay. So totally I appeared in uh, seven challenges. I able to clear four challenges. So each and every time, your confidence, your basic knowledge will get strength stronger. So recommend your students to uh, enroll in this challenge. The second thing is IBM offering summer school each and every day. This summer school is free of cost and uh, it will happen for two weeks, intensive course. Okay. Totally 6,000 students are uh, got admitted in this program. Yeah, nearly 1 lakh participants will apply for this course. So you should be very careful, you should be very eager, you should make friends in this network to get to know the information. Sometimes I will put a lot of at US time because they will release this summer school announcement in US time. Okay. So we should be very alert. So this course will cost at least 1 lakh rupees. At least 1 lakh rupees it is worth. Okay. This is a nominal price we are doing by ourselves. But if you go for industry, it will cost more. Okay. So everything, it is in open source form. Okay. So why company offering this much of things in open source, in free of cost? If you are MNC or corporate giving something in terms of free, what it means? Promotion, right? To build a community. If they are offering free of cost, okay, it means you are the product. You are not using their product, you become one of their product. Okay, so if it is beneficial, definitely we need to take. According to me, it is very good option. So IBM is there, Google is there, Microsoft is there, Amazon is there. When compare all these competitors, IBM is more and more open source. More and more open source. Okay. They have very strong community, especially in one. So, one interesting thing, uh, certification. So, among all competitors, only IBM offering certification. No other company offering industry level standard certification. So, this certification requires 73%. So I appear for this exam after four months. I got 72 percent failed by one person mark. I don't know how to react, but my student appeared for first time. He cleared with 83 percent. This will happen because students are more and free, more and more free. They are not committed like us. We have so much of responsibility. Okay, I am very happy about my students because if we are able to concentrate within four months, we are able to clear this. So next time I reappear, this time I got 65% worse than the first one. So next time I reappear, I got uh, 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 middle of the uh, exam internet built up. So immediately I rebooked that uh, early morning, I cleared this exam with 86%. So this exam cost 200 US, US dollars. When you clear all these challenges, okay, they will issue 200 dollars free voucher. Per. So this is very good chance. Without cost, even though you are able to appear certification. Once you clear the certification, the starting salary in India, 2 lakh per month. Even starting salary, 2 lakh per month. So it is very good option to uh, uh, popularize between, uh, between our students. Okay. So ask them to approach the certification. Once they clear the certification, any company they will hire, not only any. Any company involved with quantum, they will hire. 
So once you clear the certification, you can go for IBM post, advocate post. Again, it is an honorary post provided by IBM. Okay. To uh, apply for this post, there are two conditions. You need to clear certification as well as you need to give two open source contributions. So as I mentioned, if you are good at uh, writing, you can create a blog spot. If you are good at uh, composing music, you can compose a song to promote the software. If you are good at designing, you can design a poster or infographic to promote the software or to any kind of algorithm in a text. Okay, it should be a open source contribution. Okay, if you are very good at programming, you can create code, you can share in GitHub, you can popularize it. Or otherwise, you can create a tutorial, video tutorial, audio tutorial, any form you need to contribute. The easiest way you are able to create a quantum club in your institute. This is also accounted as contribution. For me, teaching this course is highest level of contribution. If you are proposing this course as an elective, if you are offering in your normal curriculum, okay, they will consider as topmost contribution. Okay, please uh, look forward for it. So there are uh, totally uh, 150 people uh, clear this certification from India. There are uh, nearly 95 people who achieve this skip advocate post. Once you achieve this skip advocate post, if there is any conference, if there is any workshop happening in US, Japan, Germany, they will give you flight ticket, they will give you each and everything, accommodation, food, everything they will take. Okay, this is very good opportunity for us also. So out of 95, 90 people are from students community. They are second year students, third year students, final year students. Only four people are from academy. Only three or four from industry. So there is there is lot of vacancy from academy. So once you complete an advocate post, <laughs> then you can go for three months internship. So before one year, I appear for internship. Okay. There, the scientists and researchers, they will populate their own problem statement. If you are interested in that problem, you can approach them, you can make pair. They will give you. Otherwise, if you have an interesting problem, you can populate, you can post it. If the problem is very attractive according to their domain, they will approach you and they will make pair. So, doing internship is bilateral. It is not a one way. So, very good scope for us. Once you complete the three months internship, they will uh, they will update your project in IBM Quantum Medicine. So industry will recognize you. Industry will recognize your contribution. So easiest way to get recognition from industry. So once you clear this uh, internship, you can be a mentor. You can be a mentor from some other students or some other projects. Okay. I got two students from USA. They completed a quantum mathematical problem. I don't know what it is. Okay, to understand their problem, it took me one month. Ahead. They are doing first year engineering. Look at their uh, skills. Whatever they know, to understand what is their problem, it took one month. Ahead. They have each and everything. They have facility, they have exposure. They know what to do. Out of this project, they published two ACA papers. Imagine first year engineering students in the US, they are able to publish two SCA papers within three months project. But before that, they have each and every note. They are starting from age 10. They are starting uh, this knowledge from age 10. So US government created a curriculum, they updated their curriculum, they are interpreting slowly from age standard onwards. How to include quantum mechanics, quantum computing concept, slowly. So once you have completed this internship, you can go for these free courses. So all these courses are available in IBM Quantum website. This is free of cost. So I recommend. Uh,
So I recommend everyone to go basics of quantum information. So this course is taught by a professor who is teaching 30 years in Canada. In US, UK, Canada, they are teaching this course for past 30 years. In India, just now we are starting. Even in IIT, they started before 5 years or 10 years. Okay. So teaching quantum is very, very limited in India. And you can count on your fees. Only few private industry they are offering uh, course in quantum. So this is a simple architecture of a quantum from IBM. So you can see how it appears. It is not like regular computer. It is made up of gold, copper, mercury, which are material has superconducting property. They used to construct this type of machines. So uh, that machine is kept over here. This is like a cryogenic rocket engine shield where they will keep that machine. Okay. So under that machine, they have a small quantum cross. Everything in the setup of a big size refrigeration. So it will cool down that system up to absolute zero temperature. So minus 273 degree, it will cool down. Okay. So this is one type of architecture. So you can create thousand different types of architecture to create a quantum computer. This is one type of architecture. So this is the control electronics. They will give microwave pulse to control all your uh, electronic component to, uh, to operate your subatomic part. So we are using electron, ion, proton to store your data to compute your data. Not with the flow of electrons. We are using uh, electron itself to store your data to compute your data. So fundamentally it is very different from classical computer. So, so many companies approaching uh, different ways, different architecture, each and every company, they are investing millions of dollars. If it is a technological gene, they are investing billions of dollars. Sometimes you can use diamond to construct quantum waves. Okay, diamonds, laser light, photons, you can use to construct quantum computers. So uh, learning, learning this course is uh, quite difficult, but teaching this course is much more difficult. Okay. So we always need to look which is the easiest material to deliver your content. Okay. So learning is easy, but make others to understand is very challenging, very difficult in case of form. Okay. So I got permission from Ms. Geeta Jalivelgatrama. She is an illustrator working at Artworks. Okay. I got her permission. He made a beautiful PDF. Everything, if you are looking in this slide, is handy, not a graphical design. Okay. So I made this PDF in animated version. So each and every time we need to show like a magician. Whatever the information you want to show, only show that information at particular point. Okay, this is my logic. And it took me six months time. Six months time to make animated version. So look at this diagram. We'll start with basic question. What is the purpose of Moore's law? What this law means? Taking mass Yes. This is the prediction given by Jordan Moore. He is one of the co-founder of Intel Company. So each each and every two year, the number of uh, the computation power will get doubled. So how they are increasing number of uh, uh, power of computation by double by using this method. So your processor contains about billions of transistors. The size of your uh, processor remains same. Each and every year, the size of your processor remains same, but the same within the same size, you need to increase number of transistors. So how we are increasing number of transistors by doing mini miniature. Each and every year they try to miniature size of the transistor. So this is how they will increase number of transistors. So the power of your processor will get better. We cannot do the same process again and again year and year. 
okay there is practical difficulty which will lead to this problem your processor will not become cheaper your processor will not become smaller you cannot decrease your sales okay because of this law semiconductor industry cs and it industry grow this far if they are not able to increase number of transistor the processor capacity will not get double your process processor is not new company won't invest on upgradation if they are not able to do upgradation they are not able to take challenging project each and every year. so how how company will grow each and every year they will take challenging projects to solve the challenging projects they need upgraded process so it will impact all these three industries it will impact semiconductor industry as well as cs and it industry if these three industry affected all industry will get affected because of this load okay we are doing service cs and it industry we are creating software for other industry we are acting like a catalyst we are acting like a accelerator so this is an example for uh, simplest form of transistor transistor will act like a switch so it will used to depict your data either in on state or in off state okay how we are achieving this by controlling flow of electrons so this is the basic concept on fundamental the size of your transistor is less than uh, 10 nanometer suppose if you want to design a uh, transistor less than 4 nanometer what will happen quantum tunneling exactly quantum tunneling which is called quantum effects which you, which will not allow you to miniature your uh, transistor cells so this is very basic problem fundamental problem so quantum tunneling will make electrons to jump and flow even the switches off so what it means can i randomly reduce the size okay so okay but what this means electrons will be on the barrier electrons will see that as a barrier exactly which is off exactly it will exactly carry the same phase of Imagine the fan which is in off mode. Even though it is in off mode, your fan will get run. You will become mad. What is happening? You don't know. Everything will go out of your control. Here, this will happen. Suppose if you want to store your data in the form of zero, it will convert automatically into one. After some time, it will convert automatically into zero. Okay. flow of electrons will go out of your control if you are not able to control your electron flow everything will go out of control you cannot store your data you cannot process your data your system become unstable so this problem they call quantum tunneling okay another example why we are keeping door gates in your room <coughs> why we are keeping doors gates in your room to control movement of people Okay. Even though if you have door, electron will uh, surpass your door. It is like a black magic. It will penetrate. So electron will not see potential barrier. It will move away. It will find a quick way to bypass. This effect is called quantum tunneling. If you try to reduce less than four nanometer, so all semiconductor industry is stagnated because of this physical reality. so we'll discuss what is the meaning of quantum uh, quantus is a latin word to represent how great the same word little modification to represent the smallest piece of energy so where you can find smallest piece of energy where you can find smallest piece of energy in this universe subatomic level okay so energy in atom uh, energy between electrons repulsive energy attractive energy so you can find smallest piece of energy subatomic okay. 
same way quantum mechanics will describe nature of at its time scale if you want to describe nature you need to refer with quantum mechanics quantum mechanics will be clear description about how nature functions so normally in our school in our college they are teaching only classical mechanics why they are not teaching quantum mechanics in our school they never taught quantum mechanics they only taught classical physics classical mechanics. Because most of the time, our brain evolved to observe, to analyze classical mechanics. Classical mechanics is very relevant for us. Day to day life, it has more impact. So that is why they kept more and more related to classical mechanics when compared to quantum mechanics. So mechanics involved in subatomic level described by quantum mechanics. How electron reacts, how ion reacts, how repulsive, repulsive energy reacts. Everything can be described with their book on the mechanics. So look at this image. If you if you put all scientists together, all physicists together, okay? so Isaac Newton will come for first time. Will come come at first time. Okay. What is the importance of Isaac Newton when compared to all scientists? Yes, sir. But basically, he identified gravitation. To explain gravitation, he invented mod modern mathematics. So, what is the uh, differential calculus we are studying? Integration we are studying. He laid the foundation for it. He invented new mathematics to describe his own problem. Okay. So, what is the meaning of differentiation? Why we are using differential calculus? Suppose if, you, if our problem is so big, we are not able to solve, we are taking a small part out of it. We are differentiating a small problem out of a bigger problem. Even though that small problem is unmanageable, we are able to differentiate one more thing. So we are taking a small part out of a big problem each and every time if you are doing derivative. Once you took derivation, if it is manageable, we are doing all these calculations, we will get finite result. Then we are doing the reverse process. We know where we took all those data. We are applying upper limit and lower limit. So we are doing the reverse process. So he invented each and every. He laid foundation for modern mathematics, sorry, modern physics as well as modern mathematics. So look at this example. He found the reason the apple is falling towards you. Okay? Because earth has gravitational. Okay? Whether apple is pulling earth towards you. Whether apple is fully yet smooth. It is full length. Each and every object in the universe, it will exhibit gravitational force. According to the mass, force will be. Because earth mass is so big, it has strong gravitational force. So each and every object exhibiting gravitational force according to its mass. So he identified that factor, then he able to identify with the gravitational factor also. In what speed it is falling? What is the acceleration? So he invented each and every uh, scientific reason he able to do for complex process. He able to explain velocity. He able to explain momentum. So each and every discovery will lead to complex theory. Okay. So whatever law applicable for small object, the same law will applicable for planetary objects. So with the help of modern physics, we are able to predict our entire world. So because of physics law, we are able to predict where rocket will go if we launch from here. So each and everything is predictable. This is what exactly we are doing in machine learning. In machine learning, what we are doing, based upon the historical data, we are able to create a model. This model is able to predict in future. The same thing physics will do. The same thing chemistry will do. If you know now, if you know the scenario, it will predict what what will going to happen. <coughs> so why this is important? Because if you compare with quantum, everything will vary. The quantum and classical worlds are apart. Okay. 
so the rules applicable for classical world will not applicable same in the quantum world take an example of an ant and yourself what an ant can do you cannot do what you can do an ant cannot do because your world your size everything varies okay so normally if you go to subatomic level subatomic particle level the rules will not applicable equally in like classical world each and every rule will slightly varies so this give clue to compare classical and quantum we we'll start with particle and waves whatever we covered in school this will help to understand quantum so this is the simplest experiment take a bucket of uh, full bucket of sand and pour over a slip uh, over a plate which contain two slips and beneath the plate put one more plate it will form two distant piles why it is forming two distant piles why it is forming why it is forming two distant piles so the particles are being poured exactly so sand grains are independent to each other grains are independent to each other because of gravitational force it is falling down freely falling down so it will exhibit the particle nature of sand if you know the nature of sand if you know the gravitation then you are able to reason out why it is happening the same experiment we are doing with the help of water here we are changing the medium it is same setup we are tapping water from one side and this wave will go to two slits okay it will form the same pattern from this two slits so sometime it will collide sometime it will go to the so this is called interference pattern the same experiment but we are changing the medium the results are so different so this will reveal wave nature but if you are doing the same experiment in quantum the result will be here you are able to reason but in quantum you are not able to reason so uh, experiment with light has strong correlation between religion in every religion they associate the form of god in the sense of light pure light. why they are forming god in the sense of pure light? in every religion made up of particles okay any other forms of energy forms of energy then people afraid to go in dark during night time people got so much of scare okay if you have light you have enough information about your surroundings if you have enough information you won't get scared this is the basic so god will exist in the form of light he will remove all darkness so he will guide us so this guiding you can see in each and every religion so most of the philosophical and uh, physics experiment came out of light experiment so you can see so much of correlation between science and religion so use your uh, same experiment setup uh, shine your light from one side this will create a continuous wave, like a water okay the continuous wave will go through two slits and it will form a interference band some time it will create a darker band some time it will create a lighter band okay why it is creating a conflict the light source is same but why it is colliding at some points because it has phase difference even though the source of the light is same but we are dividing at two different places so it will have phase difference between those two waves what's it Okay. Okay. So, because of the difference, 
Sometimes it will do darker burn, sometimes it will do lighter burns. So you can see this pattern. This is due to interference. So do the same experiment, do the same experiment with little modification. If you are adding detector, if you are adding detector near to your uh, slits, okay, it will control your light path. It will control your light path and it will create only two bands, right? Sand path. The same light, adding little modification, if you try to observe, if you try to control, it will reveal particle nature. So we can control like this. If you are not observing, if you are not looking, it will appear like a wave. Okay. When you try to look at it, when you try to measure, when you try to control, it will appear like a particle. So you can compare this experiment with decision making. Before decision making, we have so much of thoughts. If you have so much of thoughts, so much of option, it will appear like a wave. But once you are strong, once you are making decision, Every option will go away, only one option will stay as your decision. So you can correlate each and everything in our life. Particle nature, wave nature, we can correlate every aspect of our life. So we do the same experiment with the help of electron. With the help of electron. So here what we are doing, we are rejecting electron one by one, okay. Sometimes it will go upstream, sometimes it will go downstream, okay. So in previous experiment, we are able to understand because we are sending continuous wave, it will form a wave-like, uh, water-like pattern. But here we are sending electrons one by one, like a particle. How it is creating ripples like this? What's it? Sometimes it will behave like a wave, so uh, very difficult to imagine. Sometimes electron will go to upstream, sometimes it will go to downstream, but in quantum, the electron can go both sleep at the same time. This is very strange. Okay? So same person cannot exist in two places at the same time. But in quantum, same particle can exist in multiple places at the same time. Same person can deliver in Bangalore. At the same time, I can deliver in USA in quantum group. That is possible. But in classical, this is not possible. Sometimes if you want to learn quantum, you need to forget, you need to unlearn each and everything what you need. So our intuition will fight with this. Sometimes people will get mad to understand quantum phenomena. Because the outcome of any quantum experiment nearly impossible to understand, neither to explain. So I cannot have any proof, I cannot have any reason to explain this. Difficult to understand by classical means. So uh, this is very important point. If you run any quantum experiments, the outputs are always random in nature. It is not determined, always random. Yes, Maybe. We are not able to reason out, but scientists need proof. If you are looking at uh, religion, metaphysics, they will see. So there are so much of movies, Marvel movies, there are so much of flow out of the same person existing multiple universes. Whatever you are doing up here, it will reflect in their lives. Whatever they are doing, it will reflect your lives. Sometimes in our dreams, we are able to see what is going to happen. In our childhood, we have those memories. What are exactly going to happen, we already visited in our dreams. We already realized in our dreams. It is called ESP, extrasensory perception. But when we are growing, all our uh, innocence will go away. Okay, all our innocence will go away. We will, we will lose the power also. We don't know whether it is scientifically provable, but things will happen. I think one of the chapters, they have mentioned some of the negative results having 
Man, because in religion, the experience will differ person to person. But in science, it should be equal, same if you do experiments, wherever you are doing. Sometimes it is very difficult. So, quantum uh, 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 underlie over two important principles, superposition and entanglement. Can anybody describe what is mean of mean superposition? One position over another position at the same thing, in simplest time. Take an example of your vision. If you are wearing spectacles, your vision is superimposed by your spectacles. Okay. Suppose if you are wearing 3D glass over your spectacles, your vision is superimposed by two spectacles. One is normal spectacle, one is 3D glass. So one position over another position at the same thing. Entitled. Okay. So sometimes we we'll use classical example to, to describe quantum phenomena. It, it may not be accurate, but closely you are able to understand. So most of the time you will land at in philosophical thinking while reading quantum. So, 50% of research is done by philosophers in quantum. So, take any quantum particle, it could be photon, it could be electron, ion, neutron, okay, it will spread like a wave. So, initially, when we are studying in chemistry, electron is shown like a dot, but it will not appear like a dot. It will appear like a envelope, it will appear like a functioning body. It is not a dot. To illustration, they represent like a dot. So it will exist like a wave of problem. So at this place, the existence will be 40 percent. From at this place, the existence will be 40 percent. So you need to have all your probability where it exists finally. The state of being in multiple locations at once, each with different probability. So you need to mention the probability where it exists, not certainly. So just like this, you need to add all these probability together to know the resultant. Okay. So a quantum particle may have multiple quantum states. You need to add all these quantum states to know its superposition. Okay. So we are actually in the real push. So if you are asking a person about the current status, it is a combination of whatever the states they achieved from their childhood. If you are measuring a person, Yes. So, if you are, if you try to measure a person at 10th standard, he will get some more. If you try to access a person in 12th standard, he will get some more. But cumulatively, you will have all together whether a person is successful or medium range or he is a loser. So this is very uh, famous common example. If you are uh, tossing a coin, okay, it will exist in superposition. <coughs> so coin contains two states, either k or k. Okay. So because it contains two states, probability is divided equally: fifty percent for k, fifty percent for k. So while it is in rotation, can you say what is the state of coin? Because it is superposition, it is in mixed state. We cannot describe a quantum state when it is in superposition. So what we have to do, we need to stop the coin with our hand to stop it. Once you stop it, if you are able to observe, you are able to say 100% certainty. Okay? Otherwise, you let the coin to fall. Okay, After some point of time, you observe, you are able to know what is the exact state. Because we have two states divided into equal chunks, equal probability. So compare the same thing with famous uh, example, Schrodinger cap. What is this experiment is about? 
So we are taking a black box. In the black box, we are keeping a radioactive material as well as cap pencil. Okay. We don't know when the radioactive material is going to leak. It. Okay, it is unknown. Okay, at any point of time, it will leak. It. The cap is exposed to radioactive material. If it is exposed, cap becomes leak. Okay, so there are two states possible for a cap, either in alloy mode or dead mode. So probability divided into equal terms: fifty percent for alloy, fifty percent chance for dead. So compare the uh, two experiments with cube. Cube contains six phases. Okay, for some people the orange will appear like a front face. For some people the blue will appear like a front face. It is based upon where you are observing. If you are observing from this side, this will appear like a front. If you are observing from that side, that will appear like a front. Okay, so same quantum experiment from where you are observing. The result will be. The result will be. But you need to add all together to exact the full superposition, the full form of superposition. So compare the same example with the electron spin. Consider electron like a cricket ball. Sometimes it will spin upwards. Sometimes it will spin downwards. Okay. So we are associating this spin with our data. If it spin upwards, we are considering state zero. If it spin downwards, we are considering the state one. Sometimes your cricket ball will spin diagonally. If it is spin diagonally, it is both state zero as well as state one. It is the mixture of both. It is like a gray color, not exactly white, not exactly black. It is in between. So this is the key thing about quantum. So in quantum, you can represent multiple data within a single device, within a single subatomic part. So now we can discuss about entanglement. Under the right condition, this plant will grow to its full potential. In the same way, if you are taking two electrons or two photons under the lab experimental setup, you are able to make strong correlation between them. If you are able to make strong correlation between them, that state is called entanglement. Okay. So whatever happens for one particle. The same effect you can see another point because very strongly bonded together. Take an example of husband and wife. Whatever the lifestyle changes in husband, it will immediately affect the lifestyle of wife if they are financially very dependent. Okay. Same example you can put for parents to their children. So whatever happens for their parents, immediately you can see reflection in their uh, child's lifestyle. This is an example for classical entanglement. So entanglement is a natural phenomenon. Superposition is a natural phenomenon. We are using this phenomena to represent our computation and our data. Okay. Suppose if you are making strong correlation between two photons, okay, you can separate from one universe to another universe. One universe to another universe, we are able to see the information between them. Okay. So once you are able to do, what you can do? If you are taking two photons, if you are making strong correlation, what you can achieve because of this? If you are taking two photons, two electrons, you are making strong correlation. Whatever happens for one particle, you can see the same thing in another particle. If we are able to do so, what we can do? What we can achieve? So we can do communication. We can do communication. This communication will happen at the speed of light. There is no delay. Still scientists are wondering why it is happening. They don't know the reason behind it, but they are able to see the phenomenon. Most of the quantum experiment, they are able to do experiment, they are able to observe the result. But they are not able to describe the reason for it. So, yes, sir. Observable, sir. We can observe the changes from one particle to another particle. In a closed system, they talk. Yes, sir. No, no, no. We are doing experimental system. Not separate two systems, sir. It should be stayed together. 
we should preserve that uh, entire human spirits. So we can compare this uh, example with rock, paper, scissors. We are playing with the children, right? So if you are playing in this way, immediately you will know who is the winner, who is the loser. Immediately, based upon their selection, immediately you will know who is the winner, who is the loser. So instantly it will be said the state of other party. So take two photons or two electrons, okay, to make it an entanglement, then separate between two galaxies, then make one electron to state state one, the other electron will be same state one. So it is like a black magic. Whatever you do for one electron, the same reflection you can see in another electron, like a mirror. Another example, a twin is born in India, one twin is moved to USA, one twin is moved to Japan. If you know date about the one twin, you are able to know the age of another twin without asking. Knowing information about one particle, you are able to know information of second particle without knowing it. Same concept we are using in entanglement. So let's get this right very good. <coughs> Have you studied about Richard Feynman? So he is a Nobel laureate. During his school days, uh, teachers are not able to answer his question. So he dropped out from school, he self-taught, okay. Uh, then he became professor, he went to Caltech, he taught physics for professors and lecturers. If Richard Feynman is going to take class, the auditorium is filled with professor and lecturer. So if you have time, go and watch YouTube video, very famous to take physics. Unconventional way he will teach physics. Okay, very interesting to know about him. And we will describe what is a quantum computer. Okay. So quantum computer is made up of quantum particle. It could be anything. Okay. This quantum particle will act like qubits. Qubit stands for quantum bits. Qubit stands for quantum bits. And you can construct out of any quantum particle. It could be electron, it could be photon, it could be ion. Multiple ways to select your quantum particle. And each and every quantum particle contains properties. Take an example of <laughs> electron. Electron will contain spin property. Okay. Photon will contain polarization property. So why we are using uh, uh, colors? Why we are using uh, sun glasses? Especially Rayban glasses. Okay. Why we are using? <laughs> so it will do the polarization. It will have the polarization filter. UV polarized sunglass. So if 100% sun ray is coming towards your eye, it will filter according to its spin, according to its uh, filter range or filter direction. It will filter. So once uh, you have subatomic particle, quantum particle, this property exists in superposition. Take an example of spin. Upward spin, downward spin, sometimes diagonal spin also possible. Polarization, uh, horizontal, vertical, sometimes diagonal. Okay, diagonally polarized. So, take uh, a, a two quantum particles, make entanglement between them. Okay, to observe superposition, one quantum particle is enough. But to do entanglement, we need at least two quantum particles. Okay, take an example of 100 quantum particles. Do entanglement between 100 particles, it will appear like a military march force. So, if one particle doing one thing, one moment, all particles do the same thing. You can imagine the entangled particles between 100 or 1000 will act like a military march force. Okay, so this is exponential speed up to quantum computation. Normally, we cannot change all data in classical system. We will do sequentially, one by one. But here, we can do 
instantaneously and parallel. Okay, this, this is one of the examples. And you can go for quantum algorithm. You can write quantum algorithm which consists of quantum logic gates. So whatever logic gates we have in classical, we have quantum version. Un gate, or gate, XR gate, not gate, we have quantum version. We need to use quantum logic gates, which will operate on quantum particle, whatever the particle you chosen, and it will do operations. So what is the advantage of doing all this stuff? You will get exceptional computation speed up. Sometimes this speed up will go for 10,000 times faster. So classically, if you are getting 5% uh, achievement or 10% speed up, we will celebrate. Imagine the same algorithm accelerated to 10,000 times faster. So that is the potential of quantum because of this entanglement and superposition problem. Then finally, we need to do measurement. Anybody hear about measurement in quantum? Or uh, measurement in classical physics. In school days, we are doing measurement. What, what is the meaning of doing measurement in uh, school physics or chemistry lab? Lab measurements, sir. physics lab or chemistry lab measurement. We are quantifying anything, we are doing experiment, we are making observation, we are noting. When doing measurement, the experimental setup will remain as it is. So, so many times you can do measurement, won't affect your experimental setup. But in case of quantum, it will affect your quantum particle status. Okay, imagine quantum particle like a soap bubble. If you are touching the soap bubble, what happens? It will burst out. Okay, if you are hammering a very strong hammer over your little head, the shape of it will get collapsed entirely. So far. Okay, so doing measurement for a quantum particle like a terrible accident to the quantum system. Okay, we need to do measurement for a quantum system to store your data in classical bits. So we are input all our data in quantum bits. We are doing all calculation. After our calculation, we need to do measurement. But once you do measurement, your system will good collapse and your results are stored in classical form. Sir, excuse me, sir. We need to know this. Sir, excuse me, sir. Slides are not visible, sir. Yes, sir. Slides are visible. No, not not sir. Not visible. It is, it is visible, I think, your side uh, some internet issues. Visible, sir. It is visible for us. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, fine. So reconnect, sir. Sometimes you reconnect, it will appear. Okay, sir. So we should be very careful when doing measurement, we need to ensure all our computation are get done before measurement. Once you do measurement, quantum information will get lost for Yes. So your yes. And you were running computation. Fine. So suppose you do the same computation again. Okay. Do you mean that won't give the same results? It won't give the same results. I will explain. I will explain. Keep it in your mind. Once you do measurement, your results are transferred into classical form. So before that, it could be between zero and one. But when you do measurement, either zero or one. Your information is limited to only two states. Imagine like a fan. A fan is attached to a switch without regulator. So how many more your fan can get operated? Only two modes. Either on state or off state. If you are attaching a regulator to your fan, up to five levels. Now how many modes your fan can get operated? Six or four. Six modes. Okay. Off state. On state with zero. On state with one. It will go up to 5. Okay. Suppose your fan doesn't have regulator value. Continuous. Your fan can operate in infinite modes. The same thing you can uh, correlate with quantum bits. In a single quantum bit, you can store infinite information. It is possible. In future, it is possible. Now we are limiting quantum bit into two levels. We are attaching binary logic to quantum bits. So, the two advantages of using quantum, one is computational speed up, one is high accuracy. When you do quantum measurement, 
comparatively it will give high result when compared to classical tuning so because of this we are going towards more. so we need to maintain specialized hardware for doing this uh, it is not very easy that is why india doesn't have quantum system okay in uh, tir tata institute of fundamental research they have quantum computer but it is imported from uk in iisc they have five qubit system they have only merely five qubit system but ibm went off for thousand qubits okay uh, if you go to uh, rigidity they have five thousand qubits so each and every quantum architecture there with number of quantum bits okay so only number of quantum bit doesn't uh, gives a exact results according to the architecture the result will be so take an example of india indian government invested 14000 crores for single door okay it is nearly equal to 1.2 billion dollars okay take an example of us us invested uh, 2.5 billion dollars imagine how much china invested given this india 1.2 billion dollar us 2.5 billion dollar what would be the amount of change? Yes, yes, sir. Fifteen billion dollars. Fifteen no, billion dollars. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, uh, the statistics you are saying, na? The yes. Indian government statistics. Yes, uh, for that, any um, uh, document for that? Yes, sir. They released in quantum national quantum missions. Okay. They released in national quantum mission. We can okay. check over there. And okay. they send circular for all uh, government institutes. Okay. Okay, okay. All university, all engineering colleges, they give circular to promote these schools. So it is in in the link is uh, national quantum uh, machines. Yes, sir. In the case of national quantum mission. So okay, India okay. drafted national quantum mission, UK drafted national quantum mission, as well as Australia drafted national quantum mission. So before two to three years, Indian government also drafted national quantum mission. Okay, for the mission, they devoted 14,000 Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. So, we need to maintain ultra-cold temperature only for this architecture, what I am mentioning. So, it will slow down your quantum particles. Because quantum particles are always in random motion. Okay, we need to slow down the quantum particle to represent your data to computer data. Okay, that is why we are maintaining ultra-cold temperature. So alternatively, you can use uh, uh, laser beams to do trapped ion computation. So multiple ways you can do quantum computation. Okay, thousand different types of architecture you can do. Yes. So five to ten minutes. Fifteen minutes. So we will appear after eleven. Eleven forty. Thank you.
Hello. Is this screen is So I welcome you back to this program. Now we're going to discuss important property called P covenants. This is the phenomena which stop us to build quantum computers. So P covenants uh, is more and more related to this paradigm. Yes, quantum system has to be isolated from its surroundings to keep quantum behavior. Okay? Because we are dealing with subordinate particle server, which is very, very tiny at scale. We need to preserve its nature. Okay. We need to keep in a separate environment and we need to be isolated from surroundings. Okay. If you go to any quantum facility in IASC or IIT Metras, they have separate facility which will hang from ceiling and it is separated from ground floor. So much of suspension uh, springs they have which is isolated from its surroundings. Whatever happens for the surrounding building or environment, it doesn't affect the system in such a way they do. So take an example of a small pressure or uh, state particles, okay, temperature, vibration, electromagnetic field interference, which will completely affect your quantum system. Okay? Even your breath, even if you're if you're walking, okay, all these minute noises will disturb your whole quantum system. Okay? It is very important to isolate quantum system from surrounding environments. So this makes to build that system, to maintain that system. So it is not difficult to create quantum system. Maintaining itself, it's an expensive task. Okay. So they will maintain clean room practice. So most of the time in quantum facility, they will use clean room uh, practice. So we already discussed about uh, superposition and entanglement. So all quantum particles should be maintained in entanglement to do computation. Okay, this is always followed by decoherence. So decoherence is a natural phenomenon. Okay, normally after a certain point of time, your superposition and entanglement will get collapsed. Naturally, it will get collapsed. Whatever you do, it will get collapsed. So this is natural phenomenon. Suppose it will take fifteen seconds. I am saying in very large quantity, it will be nanosecond or microsecond. Suppose it takes 15 seconds, these noises will accelerate. So any noise happen. So immediately within two seconds, decoherence will happen. If decoherence happen, your superposition state will get collapsed. Your entanglement state will collapse. All your computation will go <coughs> into bay. Okay. So before it catches, we need to do measure. Once you do measurement, your result is stored in classical. So all your quantum information should be measured before decoherence catches your entire moment and superposition. And this is very, very expensive process. In a very single line, simple way, we can understand any exposure to any of these mentioned noise will lead to loss of quantum. This process is called decoherence. All company struggling to uh, to lower this decoherence state. Okay, they try to reduce this decoherence. More and more it is staying in superposition state, entanglement state. You can do all your process. Okay, normally it is very difficult to achieve higher value of decoherence. So, what's it? Because sir, any, any changes in environment, it will affect your quantum system. Even though if you are maintaining in an isolated way, 
naturally it will go for decomposition. It will decay. Superposition state or entanglement, you cannot keep for longer time. Naturally it will collapse. Time range differ from particle to particle. Uh, architecture to architecture, it will be. Normally, it will between microseconds. Decomposition time within microseconds. So, quantum computers are exponentially powerful. You can see with an example, if you have 100 qubits, okay, there are totally 10 to the power 24 stars in the night sky. But with the help of 100 qubits, you can represent 10 to the power 80 states. If you have 100 bits, you cannot represent these much of stars with 100 bits. 100 bits is nothing. Even you cannot store your full fledged text file. This. Hello. Hello. So if you have 300 uh, qubits, you can you can represent 10 to the power 80 particles. Okay. So if you have 300 qubits, you can represent the entire observable universe. Okay, particles in 300 qubits. So it is greater than the particle existing in observable universe. I will skip this slide, I will share with you. I will share some. I will show you. Yes, yes. No, 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 no. All your process will go away. Again, you need to refresh your QBs. You need to make it. You can use the same electrons, sir, but the question uh, will get lost. Sir, before collapse, you need to uh, take your result in classical form. That is called measurement. <coughs> That is squeezed. But before measurement, yes, yes, lost, you lost. To keep your peak open state lower. So, this is the definition of binary digit. So, bit is a binary digit which contains only one of two states in a single device. Take an example of a flip top or any semiconductor or capacitor. If you are storing it full, you can represent 1. If you are discharging, you can represent 0. So we are maintaining two level system to represent your data in a single device. Okay. This is about bit. But when you compare qubit, it is little different. When you compare qubit, it is little different. So you can notice Qubit stands for quantum bit, which will exist in superposition. This side symbol used to represent superposition state. So here we will be, be going to mention with the reference of state, not with value. In binary, it is value. In quantum, it is state. Because value doesn't change. Zero means zero always. One means one always. But here, it will change in between zero and one. So imagine it is like a needle. Okay. So, uh, electron will exist over this arc between your 0, between 1, it will move. Randomly, it will move. Okay. This vector will point to the electron position. So, this vector represents quantum state, quantum state vector. Okay. This vector will give information about your subatomic particle or quantum particle. Okay. So, so, it is in between 0 and 1. It is like a gray area, not exactly white, not exactly. Uh, in between. It continues well. So, in case of uh, bit, it is discrete. It is not continuous. Suppose, if you have two bits, two quantum bits, you can represent four possible combination at the same time. If you have two quantum bits, you can represent four possible combinations at the same time. In case of classical, 
in a single instruction cycle, you are able to denote only 0, 0. If you want to represent 0, 1, you need to wait for one more instruction cycle. So here, it will take four instruction cycles to process over all your combination. But in case of quantum, in single instruction cycle, you can represent your data, you can do any process. If you want to do addition of one to all these combinations, it is possible in single instruction cycle. <coughs> but in uh, classical, you need to wait for four. Okay. So imagine if you increase one more qubit. If you increase one more qubit, how many possible combinations you can represent at a time? 8. So this is the power of quantum. The amount of data you can represent is exponential speed. So here, we reduced seven instruction cycle. More you are reducing, more faster you can operate. That is the logic. So this will also take care of the value of the You can represent as zero and one, sorry. exactly like zero and one. But if you are introducing some quantum phenomena, it will become between zero and one. Uh, we need to introduce one gate. If you are introducing that gate, it will create randomness in that quantum. We will expose it. Just keep in this mind. You can introduce between any value. So normally you can introduce 0, 0, 0 exactly. Like classical bits, you can introduce it. You can, sir. You can prepare your qubits exactly in 0 mode. You can do it. But it is not natural. <coughs> Naturally, it is in random. There is no probabilistic uh, thing in that. It will come, sir. We will we will explain. We will explain. Now look at this slide. We have one quantum bit. With the one, one quantum bit, you can represent two information at the same time. Both zero as well as one at the same time. If we are adding one more qubit, it will double the number of possible states. So where it is related to previous slide? If you are adding one qubit, it will double the number of possible states. No, sir, where we discussed this concept in previous class. Superposition. Remember the first slide we discussed. First slide. Moore's law. So it will double your representation of information as well as your computation. Moore's law state the same thing in different ways. So we can keep Moore's law alive by, by adding only one qubit. So comparatively, it is very easy. So imagine one qubit, you can represent two values at the same time. If I add one more qubit, you can see how it gets double. Two qubits, four value at the same time. Okay, three, it will go on. Four. Computational ability also get double. If you are able to represent multiple information at the same time, you can do multiple operations also same. So by adding single qubit, you can see increase in information representation. This is not possible in classical because it is limited. So if you have 50 qubits, you can represent 1 followed by 11 zero states. 11 zero states. 
No, no, no. It is possible. They increased up to 1000 kilos. IBM, they released 1000 kilos. But adding one more qubit after 1000 is more challenging. Initially, you can increase up to 50, but adding 51 is more challenging. More challenging. That is why in military, they debate better. Here. They cannot keep more number with a uh, smaller group. Okay? Managing number of faculties is also difficult. In engineering, biology, it is very easy, but in university, very difficult. So we will have a pictorial representation of qubit. So this is a unit circle. So why we are using unit circle in mathematics? Unit circle. To make it systematic or stabilized, your radius always remains the same. It won't go below one or beyond one. Unit circles are radius equal to one, always. Okay. So we have, we have two states. State 0 and state 1, and we are representing with 90 degree orthogonal. Because state 0, state 1 are opposite to each other. Sine wave, cos wave are opposite to each other. So we have to denote with orthogonal. Yes. Yes. So how, how about the superposition? If you apply if you apply control electronics, you are able to change the spin slightly. Lightly, like a magnetic needle. Like that, you can be able to control. It is possible, sir. Controlling the spin is possible. Yes. If it is if it is moving, it is representing more than zero. More than zero. So uh, here again, the electron will go from here to here anywhere. It is in random motion. Suppose if it is over there, this state vector will represent its location. So state vector will give information about your quantum particle. Okay, it is like a needle. It will randomly move between zero and one. This needle will move randomly between zero and one. So, state 0 represents ground state or down state, state 1 represents excited state or up state. Well, in case of qubit, it is superposition state, size state, mixed state or in superposition state between 0 and 1. So, this notation is called bracket notation. This is bar, okay, followed by right angle. This combination is called bar plus get bracket notation normally. So, if you want to represent quantum state, we need to use this notation. So, take, take this uh, example. So, we have psi 1. Psi 1 means the angle is exactly 45 degrees. Your quantum particle in psi 1 means exactly it is between 0 and 2. <coughs> it is called equal superposition. 50% chance for 0, 50% chance for 1. If you are doing measurement at here, it will go either to 0 or 1 in equal probability. But if you are looking at psi 2, it is more and more towards state 1. If you do measurement, more likely you will get value 1. Less likely you will get value 0. So this is where probability will come. More and more near to particular state, more and more you will get that classical value. Clear? Okay, sir. Just we are transposing. No, we are changing the system itself. If you are looking coin like this, up will look like up, down will look like down. But if you are changing the coin to uh, different direction, your observation will vary. A person in the equator, the north pole always upwards, south pole always downwards. Is our Same. So, uh, this is the equation. Hello. Hello. 
whether mic is needed or no needs. Hello, am I audible for online participants? Yes, sir. Okay. Maybe I will sit and take. So if you are looking at this equation, if you are looking at this equation, psi equal to alpha into state 0 plus beta into state 1. Okay. So we have two states, state 0 and state 1, and we have two components before it. It is like signal strength. It is like amplitude of those signals, those states. So how many states we have? That many states we need to add together like a linear combination. In this case, it contains only two states. Sometimes it may contain three states or four states. It means four individual components we have. Okay, in this case, it is restricted to only two components. Suppose if it is in equal superposition, it is in equal superposition. This is the form. 1 over root 2 multiplied with state 0 plus 1 over root 2 multiplied with state 1. Okay. So keep this equation uh, in your notes. This is the state when you apply equal superposition exactly in 45 degree angle. So look at this figure, look at this figure. So we have a state side, okay. That's, that arrow is pointing to some electron, some electron portion, make a projection from that point to X axis. So if you're making projection, it will give signal strength of your state zero. That is called alpha, okay. So make a projection from that point to your Y axis it will make a uh, value of beta. This will give signal strength related to state one. So imagine if this pointer is near to state zero, this pointer is near to state zero, the alpha value become much greater. The beta value become much smaller. This is what it means. If you do measurement when it is near to here, more likely you will get state values. Okay? If this point is more near to state one, we get more likely value. So this is called projection. Using projection, we are able to know the signal strength of state 0 or state 1. Okay. To identify probability of state 0, we are taking modulus and we are doing square. So in physics in max, why we are taking modulus? No, sir. Better length. To identify the magnitude, we are not caring about the direction. If you apply magnitude for a vector, it will omit direct <coughs> points. So likewise, we have to know what is the signal strength irrespective of where this point is. That is in me. Okay. So if you are doing square, it will eliminate negative value. Okay. If you are doing square, it will uh, eliminate negative value. So if we have two components taking modulus, do square, you will get one. So apply this equation to previous equation. So 1 over root 2, take modulus, do square, what is the value you will get? 1 over root 2, take modulus, do square, you will get 0 0.5. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 equal to 1. Okay, this is equal to probability, normal probability. Maybe we go for some. Oh.
Hello, wait for a few minutes, online participants. I'll share screen. Is my screen visible, Blocksphere? Online participants? Is my screen visible? Visible, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Visible, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So here we are taking a, a sphere, a three-dimensional sphere instead of previous example. Okay. So we are taking radius equal to one because unit sphere, we need to maintain consistency and we need to make it systematic. And we are dividing this sphere into two halves, like two hemispheres, okay? Because we need to represent our binary logic associated to quantum bit. That is why we are dividing into two halves. So in future, we are able to divide in three halves or multiple halves. So normally, we are associating binary logic to quantum bit. So it is possible to increase base in future. If you are making a decimal value, if you are dividing into 10 levels, you are able to give decimal input directly, you are able to reduce decimal input directly. So this is the problem existing in binary logic. So all our inputs are converted into form of decimal, then we are doing computation, then we are Returning back decimal, a binary value into decimal. Most of the time, our, our effort, our time, our resource going for this conversion. Okay, in future, if it is possible to introduce decimal value directly, returning decimal value directly, the system will be more efficient. What's up? No, sir, we need to maintain systematic, we need to control signals. We are not able to control signals. So that is why we are maintaining unit radius. Okay. Yes, sir. We'll see, sir. We'll see. We'll see. You are too advanced, sir. <laughs> So why we are dividing into two halves to represent two level system, binary logic. Okay. Then we are using Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z. Okay. So this will represent any point in your sphere. So Cartesian point will represent any point in your sphere. And we are taking two extreme points, north pole and south pole, to represent state 0 and state 1. So uh, compared to the previous one, it is a circle. So uh, 90 degree will make uh, orthogonality. Here 180 degree will maintain orthogonality because zero and one are opposite in nature. Okay. So these polar points are called pure states. When you do measurement, your quantum vector will come either to state zero or state one. Are you able to visualize? When you do measurement, Automatically, your quantum vector, either it will point to state 0 or state 1. So take a random point in your sphere. It could be within your sphere anywhere, okay, within your sphere. And a uh, vector originating from uh, 0, okay, it is pointing to that quantum particle state. So your quantum state vector will give quantum information or state about your quantum particle. This is called quantum information. Normally, the quantum information is nothing but quantum state vector. So this, this is called a mixed state or superposition state. It is in between 0 and 1. Not exactly in 0, not exactly in 1. Then slice that sphere over that uh, point. It will give some xy plane. Okay, From that xy plane, try to do a projection to xy uh, your spherical plane. So this will give some signal strength. 
okay same way from this intersection make a projection to your origin so this will form a triangle okay not a normal triangle it is some right angle triangle if you have right angle triangle you can apply trigonometry you can go for polar form so slowly we are moving from cartesian coordinate into polar form okay so because we have two projections we are able to make two angles so angle 1 and angle 2 up to it is clear shall we move yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am ha 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 yes ma'am yes ma'am hello so before 3 years china demonstrated quantum communication from satellite to ground so before 2 years drdo demonstrated quantum communication from ground state station to satellite so it is possible but communication uh, uh, exists for certain length. the duration they need to increase so much of obstacle to create quantum internet and quantum communication it is in r&d level but it is possible they are doing yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am so they are doing some trick even i don't know in raman research institute they are doing research for quantum communication in bangalore you can visit over there and in chennai there is a society called scts sets they are doing quantum key distribution between iit madras to their campus okay it is possible and practical they are doing in european countries they are doing small level of quantum internet so in future indian government have plan to establish network from madras to bangalore and bangalore to delhi this is their future plan this one. Yes, sir. Uh, mm, satellite communication, sir. They are using photons. Yes, sir. They are using photons to reach over there. Photons. So, uh, consider the previous example. So, here, the vector is pointing to some arbitrary position. Okay. If this uh, angle is zero, the first angle is zero. This vector will point to north pole. If theta equal to zero, this vector will directly point to your z-axis. So this is the case. If theta equal to zero, your quantum state vector will point to north pole. Okay. So this is the polar form. So any quantum state can represent in two forms: state zero and state one. and state zero has cos component and state one has sin component and we have euler component also so e to the power i theta we have so substitute theta equal to zero in this equation we will get cos zero by 2 and sin zero by 2 if you apply value only cos component remains sin component becomes zero so your state zero will remain if you do measurement this is what uh, happens when d is equal to 0 is it clear is this clear if d is equal to 0 your quantum state will represent north pole okay when you do a measurement you will get value zero so now we will do little trick if d is equal to pi if you apply d is equal to pi where this quantum state will go the angle between your z axis to your quantum state is pi now where it will go the quantum state vector and to z axis the difference is pi angle it will go to down side it will go to down side like a rotation it is nothing but your not gate operation when you apply d theta equal to pi you are applying not gate operation state 0 to state 1 from state 1 again apply d theta equal to pi it will go back to state 
So this is an equivalent example for NOT gate operation in quantum version. So each and every gate operation will do rotation in your quantum state. This is the important point we need to understand. Each and every quantum gate operation will change your quantum state. So this will give freedom for us to do multiple computation between 0 and 1. In classical, it is not possible. Either 0 you will get, either 1 you will get. In between, you don't have any operation. But it will give so much of opportunity for us to represent multiple information. Okay. So apply the second angle, uh, sorry, first angle, d tackle to pi by 2. If you apply pi by 2, where it will be? Yes, sir? No, sir. 0 means straight 0. Pi means uh, 1. Pi by 2 means exactly in equator. Exactly in equator. So if you apply pi by 2, it will create <laughs> equal superposition. So it will create equal superposition. This can be done by a special gate called Hadaman. So Hadamat gate will create equal superposition. This will create randomness in your cubic. If you apply Hadamat gate, it will go to equator. When you do measurement, either it will go to 0, either it will go to 1. It is very random in nature. Very, very random in nature. Okay. Can you able to generate random number using your classical computer? Can you generate a random number using your classical computer? We are doing that so now. Random numbers. Code we are generating. We are not able to generate random number using we classical choosing. computer because if you go for program, it becomes deterministic, not a probabilistic. Random always associated with uncertain events. So whenever you start to write a program for random, I don't, I don't think it is so far. It's the same for MND also, man. Yeah, same pattern is. So it is like pseudo random. It is like MND. It is a no, sir. It is applicable even up to up to K. Deputy, yes, sir. Case study, yeah. Tested a lot of no, so excluding case study also you have given up to case. I'm sorry, someone in online participant, but model of Ashton or similar to someone. Then I put the number one against the other soft copy in the check mark for the land of a smart bed. It comes cut over. You're there and you don't want to steal a password is for the other one. Hello. I think coordinators have to mute I cannot mute. You have created the meeting link, they can, I think, mute all the participants. Whenever they rise to the query, they can allow to unmute. I already announced, sir. Please ah, mute your yeah, yeah, uh, mic. Somebody is talking. It's Shall okay. we proceed? Yeah. Sorry, again, edit that in there. I'm not going to take that rigid as well, but more for service. So uh, when you when you implement Hadamard gate, like ah, equal superposition. Di ma team lead madi to ladies ladies se ni yen club ke liye lead ni ma ladies club ke lead dalai yen yen liye to. Is it clear? I'm muted. I think. Online participant only will get affected now. Yeng yen shop madi ke liye to na bhi sunta tha. Somebody in chat, please is my voice audio. Yes, sir. 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 Y
Am I audible now? You are audible, sir. Am I audible now? Okay, then we can proceed. So using Hadamard gate, you can create randomness in your qubit. Okay. So what is the meaning of randomness? When you do measurement, either it will go to zero, either it will go to one. Nobody can predict the output of Hadamard gate. So if you want to generate true randomness, you can go for Hadamard gate. So generating true randomness plays a vital role in many communities. If you are involving in random number generation, you can go for Hadamard gate operations. Dear colleagues, I'm sorry. Ma'am, all the different angles, all the different angles, all the different angles. Same thing, if you apply the second angle, pi by 2, it will go from that place to y axis. So, each and every gate operation you are able to control. Okay, this is for second axis. So, finally, we have four pairs. We have state 0, state 1, which is called computational basis. So, note down, state 0 and state 1, z-axis, is your computational basis. Whenever you do measurement, the vector will go to z-axis. That is why it is called computational basis. Okay. Additionally, we have plus and minus. When you apply Hadamard gate from 0, it will go to positive state. When you apply Hadamard gate from 1, it will go to negative state. So each and everything is distinguishable in quantum. This is the special property which makes all quantum gates are reversible in nature. In classical, not all gates are reversible. Okay. Take an example of ungate. Take an example of ungate. Okay. So X, Y, and we have output. Okay. For 0, 0, what is the output we got? 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So logic is like this. When you give input, you are able to predict your output. But if I am giving output, can you predict your input combination out of it? Only for last combination, you are able to predict in case of one gate. For remaining three output combination, you lost your information. Three possibilities, but you cannot say 100%. Which one yielded your output? This is a irreversible gate operation. This is irreversible gate operation, but in case of quantum, each and every gate operation are reversible. Okay, this is more efficient. Sometimes you need to step back. You need to back propagate. In those examples, you can go for quantum instead of classical. So, Sometimes we need to go back. Sometimes. We need to undo. But in classical, most of the gates are irreversible in nature. This is the core strength of quantum. Sometimes all the operation is get lost because of this irreversible nature. So in case of uh, not gate, in case of not gate, you see your input and output combination. If input is 0, the output is 1. If input is 1, the output is 0. From your output, you can go back to your input combination. Why this is? Because these input-output combination are distinguishable, are differable. If it is distinguishable, you can go back for your previous input combination. This is not possible in most of your classical gates. Most of your classical gates. If you have any doubt, you can ask. Online participants, shall we move? Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. More, all processes are probabilistic, sir, not deterministic. No, no, only the input and output combination we are uh, talking, not in, in between, not in between. Okay. 
so yes sir so number of inputs should be equal to number of outputs then only you are able to trace that in ungate combination you have multiple inputs you have only one output so this make a problem of reversibility <laughs> so additionally we have two more axes plus i and minus i which is equal for y axis so we have three pairs to mention any point in your sphere so these three pairs will help you to point any points over your sphere so it contains six segments your sphere can be divided into six individual segments now there is a interesting part you can realize the mathematical aspect in physical phenomena so take an example of stage 0 i will magnify stage 0 so where stage 0 exist in your block sphere where we are mentioning stage 0 in your sphere to the north pole to the north pole so that is why we make the upper component as 1 the lower component as 0 so physically we can map physical quantities in the form of matrix so most of the time we are not aware while doing mathematics it is very abstract but here we are able to realize why we are mentioning this each and everything you are able to visualize okay so take an example of state 1 because it is rep represented in south pole we are making the down component as 1 the upper component as 0 each and every mathematical representation have physical meaning to you okay so next it is interesting if you look at positive state it lies in equator it lies in equator it is in between state 0 and state 1 that is why both components are one and you need to mention the quantity what is the quantity it is in equator that is why we are mentioning 1 over root 2 okay the next one is negative state negative state we are mentioning the second component as minus 1 which means this is in opposite side so positive means this half of your sphere negative means the opposite part of your sphere that is why we are making the second component as negative so negative means a different perception or opposite polarity yes sir Okay. 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 So in that each quadrant you are participating there. Ha ha ha. Okay. So how do you represent this minus twenty five? This is this is for two D, sir. Sir, this is for two D. You look at this ninety degree. This is not sphere. So sphere it is one eighty degree. Actually the image is three D, but the matrix represent two uh, two D like a circle. Sorry to mention. Okay, actually for i the second component is i. For minus i, you are representing minus component for second. So totally, you can view a sphere in this. Okay. So if you have laptop, you can go to this link. I will share this link in chat box. I shared one link in chat box, so go to it. Is my screen visible to audience? Blocks feel. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you.
So this is online platform, which is used to visualize your quantum gate operation. This is your key sphere. So we have two states, state zero and state one, which are called pure states. So state zero and state one will represent pure states. So you can prepare your quantum bit in pure states way. Okay. So first we will discuss X gate operation. X gate is nothing but your classical not gate. Okay. So observe your quantum state. It is pointing to north pole. So click X gate, which will make 180 degree rotation, which will come to state one, which will come to state. So how to hide this? Fine. Okay. So applying X gate, which will make 180 degree rotation to the opposite side. Okay. Again, apply X gate, which will make 180 degree rotation again back to state zero. So apply two X gate, which will cancel each other. So adding phi plus minus phi of the same quantity in reverse order, nullify each other. Same concept. Okay. So X gate is bit flip. Apply two X gate, which will cancel each other, retrieve back to original push. Okay. So the second gate is Y gate, which will do the same operation like X added with a phase flip. So downside, you can see the phase flip, phase information. So apply Y gate, you can see it will move to state one <coughs> along with the pi by two phase shift. In your signal, it will introduce pi by two phase shift. So X gate is bit flip, Y gate is bit flip along with phase flip. So note down this difference. So X gate is bit flip, Y gate is bit flip along with phase flip. So again apply Y gate, it will go back to state zero. Apply two Y gate, which will cancel each other. Apply two X gate next to next, cancel each other. Apply two Y gate, which will cancel each other. From stage zero, apply Z gate, you can see nothing. So Z gate will not operate in case of stage zero. But apply X gate, it will come back to state one. Then apply Z gate, it will introduce a phase flip up to pi difference. So physically you cannot see, but in signal, it will introduce a phase flip up to five phase difference. Okay, so Z gate will not operate only in state zero. Apart from all point, it will introduce a phase flip. Anywhere in your sphere, it will introduce a phase difference up to pi n. Okay, so click state zero, it will go back to north pole. Apply Hadamard gate, which will introduce equal superposition. So Hadamard gate will create quantumness or randomness in your qubit. Okay, if you do measurement, either it will go to zero, either it will go to one. Okay, so apply Hadamard gate from positive state, it will go back to zero again. <coughs> apply Hadamard gate once again from plus, it will go back to state zero. So X gate, Y gate, Z gate, H gate have own inverse. If you apply next to next, it will cancel each other. So this is important point. X gate, Y gate, Z gate, and Haramat gate have own inverse. What's that? Unitary, unitary matrix. So because of unitary matrix, because of its reversible nature, you are able to do <laughs> back propagation. Okay. So click not gate. Click not gate. Now it is pointing to south pole. Now apply Hadamard gate, it will move back to negative state. Because each and every quantum operation should be differentiable, like not gate. Okay, because of its differential nature, the same operation from different states will go to different places. Okay, so apply Hadamard gate from negative state, it will come back to state one. So 
So this make very unique about quantum operation. Everything is distinguishable because it is distinguishable. It is reversible in nature. So click stage zero, apply Hadamard gate, apply Hadamard gate, it will come to positive state, apply S yes gate, it will move in XY plane up to pi by two rotations. So from zero, apply Hadamard gate, it will come to positive state, from positive, apply S yes gate, it will move pi by two in XY plane direction. Okay. Again, click yes gate, it will move back to negative state. So it is very different from previous gates. So yes gate doesn't have own inverse. If you apply yes gate, it will not go back to previous state. It will move forward. Are able to get the difference. So apply yes gate two times, it will go to new place, not to the same reverse direction. So that is why they have yes dagger. So in physics, they will represent yes dagger. It is not working. Yes, uh, it looked like a cross. It is called dagger. So dagger will do opposite uh, action irrelevant to yes. What yes do, it will do in opposite direction. Means conjugate. conjugate transpose, which will do transformation, opposite transformation. <coughs> it is not moving. Okay, so apply Hadamard gate, apply Hadamard gate, apply yes gate, it will move to state Y. Okay, apply yes dagger, it will go back to original state. Okay, instead of yes gate, apply T gate, it will move 5 by 4 rotation in XY plane. It will do half of the operation of yes gate. So you need to relate each and every gate. So difference between X and Y, X and Z, X and Hadamard and S and T. So 2 T gate equal to 1 S gate. 2 T gate equal to 1 S gate. Okay. Again apply T gate, it will move back to Y. It is equal to 1 S gate operation. Okay. So apply T dagger, which will do reverse operation. Apply 2 times to go back to original state. Okay, so from zero, from zero, apply Hadamard, it will come back to positive state. From positive state, apply Z gate. Now find the difference. What Z gate will do? It will introduce five phase difference. It will not work in only state zero. From everywhere, it will introduce five phase difference. Are you able to understand Z gate operation? Again, apply Z gate operation, it will move back to positive state. If you apply zero, sir, if you do measurement, you will get value zero. Yes, sir. Uh, prepare state one. Introduce Z gate, you'll get minus value. But if you do measurement, you'll get value one. Value one. No, sir. The value is one because we are taking modulus, we are doing square, we'll get real magnitude. Why we are introducing uh, 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 phase? Because it will move within your sphere. We have multiple possibility during computation. Each and every point giving freedom for you to do multiple computation. This is not possible in classical. So what we do? We will go for uh, this login page, ibm.com slash quantum. 
where is uh, studio sir whether i connected to zoom yes i shared a link in chat box please check so go to this web page go to this web page click sign into platform click sign into platform it will appear like this i will sign out so use your gmail to create an account easy way to uh, create ibm id use your gmail it will request two to three forms fill that form once you fill the verification code will come to your gmail use that verification code your gmail id is nothing but ibm id your gmail id is nothing but your ibm id just now it is connected So it will appear dashboard like this. 
it will appear dashboard like this so go down go down you can see explore all courses all courses and tutorial <laughs> So I suggest everyone to enroll basics of quantum information. Okay. So there is no time limitation. You can learn on your own face. Okay. So try to click basics of quantum information. You can see this landing page. This contains four lessons. Okay. So this course is taught by Professor John Waters. So he is teaching this course in Canada for past 30 years. So each and every course, sir, each and every lesson contains a YouTube video followed by text. So this video will go for one and a half hours, but in straight away, in single stretch, you are not able to watch. Each and every time you will have confusion, you have doubt, you need to go for Google, then you need to come back. So most of the beginners, they will fed up because of complexity involved. Okay, not only for you, even for scientists, they need to refresh so many new concepts. We are lost in touch. It requires physics knowledge, mathematical knowledge. It needs to do interpretation between these two things. Okay, it will take a lot of time. So be patient. Okay, each and every time, gather something from Google. If you have doubt, then come back to video. Otherwise, I prescribe, go with text. So whenever you have information related to quantum, Take print out, then go. So I normally won't prefer for online uh, uh, teaching or learning. Okay, go for printed materials if it is possible. So if we complete all these modules, then you can go for exam. If we complete exam, you are able to get uh, this batch. You can claim batch. You can claim this batch. Okay, likewise, try to collect more and more batches. So it will give you confidence. So company can understand your uh, dedication and effort. So normally students are able to get internship if they got so much of batches. Okay, indirect way to get internship, to get job also. So once you completed this, then you can go for multiple courses. If people are involved with uh, cryptography, they can go for quantum safe cryptography. Then you can go for quantum algorithm. Then finally, you can land up with variational algorithm design, which is equal for quantum machine learning. Okay. So step by step, we need to go. So this is for learning platform. Uh, for learning in uh, uh, Composer, it is very easy. So go to Composer below the learning. Okay. So this will give a, a graphical interface to create quantum circuits. If you're a beginner, if you're a, uh, new to this domain, you can use Composer like drag and drop option. So it is appear like a musical note. It will appear like a musical note where you can drag and drop quantum gates, you can see its performance. You can visualize their outputs over here. Easiest way to learn quantum. Okay. So what I do, I will delete all these uh, quantum bits. I will keep only one quantum bit. So select any quantum bit. Okay. Select like this. If you click plus, it will increase quantum bit. If you click delete, it will delete your quantum. So same way, you can see C4. Q stands for quantum, C stands for classical. Okay. So reduce C up to 1. Up to 1. So now we have only one quantum bit and one classical. It is a common room. How many quantum bits have? That much classical bit you need to create. Because we need to save our result from quantum state to classical. 
This is the logic. So you can go to view menu. In view menu, you can customize your panels. You can select graphical editor, code editor, state vector, probability, and Q-sphere. What I do, I will maintain graphical editor and Q-sphere. I will hide remaining thing for easier understanding. So I have only graphical editor and Q-sphere. Okay, we have one quantum bit. We have one classical bit. You can see output quickly in this phase disk. If you move your mouse over this phase disk, you can see quick output. Because circuit is empty, all quantum bit initialized to state zero. So that is why you can see probability of state one is zero percent because it in state zero. Are you able to get this logic? Okay, it, it appears in gray color. Appears in gray color. So it is pointing to north pole because state zero. It is pointing to north pole. Okay. So what we do? We try to drag a north gate. So this cross will represent north gate, classical north gate operation. So here it is in state zero. Apply north gate. It will turn into state one. That is why the output change into blue color. If we see output. The probability of state one is hundred percent. This is what it means. So we did rotation by applying not gate, just like qubit. What we seen here is example. So apply not gate, it will move from north pole to south pole now. Clear? Okay. Then enable one more panel. Go to panel. Enable state vector. So you can see computational basis because we have one qubit, we have two outcomes possible: state zero and state one. Because we apply not gate, now your signal strength is pointing to state one. Full signal amplitude is the case of your signal strength. Okay. Now what do you do? Select this not gate, delete it, and you can see north pole. Now signal strength come to state zero. Okay, then go to view, enable panels, enable probabilities. You can see in the terms of probabilities. Actually, we need to refresh. Sometimes it won't appear. Now it is reflected. So difference between state vector and probabilities. You need to do modulus. You need to do square to get probabilities value. Okay, because it is single value, we are not able to differentiate. Okay. So what we do? We try to incorporate Hadamard gate in Q zero. So what Hadamard gate will do? It will create equal superposition. Now look at your Q-sphere. Within a single device, within a single qubit, you able to represent both zero and one at the same time. Look at the computational basis. You got value as zero point seven zero seven. Do modulus, do square, you'll get zero point five in terms of probabilities. Are you able to get this logic? If we apply Hadamard gate. Sometimes it will generate zero. Sometimes it will generate one. Same circuit run multiple times, you'll get random value between zero and one. Okay. So select this Hadamard gate, delete it, include one more qubit, Q zero and Q one. Now you have four possible combinations because we have two qubits. We have Four different possible combinations. Okay, 
because circuit is empty, you'll get zero zero. Circuit is empty, you'll get zero zero. Drag and drop not gate in Q zero. Drag and drop not gate in Q zero. You can see changes in your things. So the Q zero associated with the right rightmost value. Here it is, it is little twisted. Okay, Q zero always associated with rightmost value. So Q one always contain value one. Sorry, Q zero always contain value one. Q one always contain value zero. So look at first possibility. Zero zero is possible? No, because Q zero is one. This is not possible. Look at second combination. Zero one. One is possible for Q zero. Zero is possible for Q one. So this is possible. So look at third combination. Q zero is zero, but here Q zero is one. Okay. So Q one is zero. Here Q one is one. This is not possible. Fourth possibility. So one is possible for Q zero, but one is not possible for Q one. So this is not possible. So out of four possibility, you have only zero one combination. You able to get? So drag and drop not getting Q one, and you can see the difference, the transformation. Only the third possible combination is enabled. Clear? Drag and drop one more not get in Q zero, it will go back to one more. So in exam. they will give scenario like this they will add some gate operation they try to visualize what is the output they will get so they will use these tricks in certification itself okay so what do you do delete all this uh, gate drag and drop hadamard gate in q0 drag and drop hadamard gate in q0 and observe your output so for q0 Zero is possible. One is possible. Look at first combination. Zero is possible for Q zero. Okay. Zero is possible for Q one. So this is possible combination. Second output zero one. One is possible for Q zero. Okay. Where in case of zero is possible for Q one. This is enabled. Look at the third option. Zero is possible for Q one. Sorry, Q zero. But one is not possible for Q one. This is not possible. In fourth case, one is possible for Q zero, but one is not possible for Q one. This is not enabled. Are you able to get? Okay. So because amplitude in the terms of modulus and square, but in case of probability, it is fifty fifty. Now two possibility will appear with fifty fifty percent chance. Apply one more Hadamard gate in Q one. You are able to enable all possible combinations. So Hadamard gate give power to enable so much of information. If you are attaching two qubits in entanglement states, it is get exponential increase. So within that, I I will stop at here. Okay, we will go for lunch. Then we will come back at two o'clock.
Hello, am I audible? Participants? Yeah, uh, we can proceed. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. So we'll uh, start from the uh, last slide. So let us discuss from superposition to definite position. Okay. So imagine a qubit which contains only uh, two states, state zero and state one. It could be intermediate anywhere. Okay. So observe over here. This is the superposition state psi. It will go between your zero and one anywhere, like a needle. So continuously it will change its states. Okay. So if you try to track this movement, uh, movement of this qubit, and you can uh, find a wave function like this. You can find a wave function like this. So the path it traces really look like a wave. Okay. So if you try to measure, uh, if you try to measure your things, if you try to measure your things, it will observe like a amplitude. It will observe like a amplitude. Maybe I will share only a PowerPoint presentation. It will be easy for us to observe. instead of entire screen okay its amplitude will determine the probability of the outcome either zero or one it will describe okay so finally when you do measurement it will change it into probability so whenever you do measurement it will convert your amplitude value your signal value into probability and this probability will retain into classical bit. The higher the probability, the more likely give your outcome. This is what we need to understand from this slide. Okay. So next we are moving uh, to a simple example. Okay. With the help of your wall clock. With the help of your wall clock. So imagine if you have a wall clock and observe all these uh, number quantities. So starting from 12 up to 11, you make a round and you make a circle. Okay. So convert this number, replace this number from how far it is from horizontal axis. So horizontal axis lies in, lies between 9 and 3. Okay. It is like x axis in your uh, uh, ball clock. Okay. So you measure how much quantity 2 is away from x axis, one quantity. How much quantity 1 is away from 3, two quantity. How much quantity 12 is away from 3, three quantity. So likewise you denote all your uh, quantity differs from x axis. Okay. So likewise, if you go downside, we need to represent negative sign to check the opposite polarity. For instance, after 3, 4, it will go downside. That is why we mentioned with minus 1. 5 with minus 2. Okay, 6 with minus 3. So this is how we measured in downside with respect to x-axis. So observe slide. If you have any doubt, you can ask me. Otherwise, put a message in chat box. Is it clear? Shall we move?
Hello. Are you able to listen? Are you able to understand these two diagrams? Shall we move? Okay, okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please, please, you can. So, try to plot in a graph all this value. Okay. So, what is the value of that clock away from the x-axis? So, take an example of uh, 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 zero. How it is far from zero? Zero quantity, like 12 gray quantities. We try to deploy all this value. From zero, three means three quantity, two means two, one means one. Likewise, it will go some. For the negative quantity, it will go to negative cycle. Negative cycle. So likewise, the pattern will be repeated and it will make a periodic wave. If you try to deploy all these values, all this value, it will show a periodic wave. The cycle will repeat. Then we will discuss about amplitudes. Most, most uh, part of the time in quantum deals with signals. So signals always deal with amplitude. If you want to know information about the signal, we need to do measurement. If you do measurement, you will get, you will get amplitude value of that signal. Okay. So amplitude is a property of waves. So this is an example for a wave. Wave contains uh, a wavelength from crest to another crest or from uh, a peak to another peak, you are able to identify a wavelength. Okay. So same way you are able to identify period, okay, from top to top you are able to count or from uh, bottom to bottom you are able to count a period value. Okay. The difference between period and wavelength, wavelength have a complete cycle. Wavelength have a complete cycle, where in case of amplitude, it will give signal strength of that signal. Okay, so whenever you do measurement, we are measuring amplitude of that signal. We need to mention this point. Okay, suppose if you have a wave of having certain amplitude, having certain pattern, and if you are adding the same kind of wave to next to next to each other, okay which will add together and it will give a amplified version of that pattern, amplified version of that signal. Okay, adding 5 plus 5, which will give 10. So likewise, it will go on. Okay, so adding same pattern, adding uh, same quantity, next to next. But if you're adding a different pattern, a opposite pattern or opposite signal, next to next, of the same amplitude, okay, it will nullify each other, for an example, adding 5 plus minus 5, which will nullify each other, equal to 0. So we are using this property to mention your outcomes. So I'll zoom it. So amplitude influence your outcomes. The interference can be used to cancel wrong answer as well as to amplify correct answer. So in quantum, if you execute any program, okay, it will give correct answer as well as it will give wrong answer. Okay. So each time it will give with high probability. So this is the point we need to mention. Okay. Whenever you do uh, a measurement, measurement will turn into strength of amplitude. Amplitude will turn into terms of probability. So go through this slide. If you have any doubt, you can ask. Otherwise, we can proceed. Yeah, please proceed, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
So we will, we will have a simple example. Okay. So take an example of uh, doing two plus two. Doing two plus two. We are doing a classical program. We are doing a classical program. And we are doing a quantum program for the same thing. Okay. So you know your input. You know your input. You know your program. You know your program or you know your process. If you know your input, if you know your process, you can predict, you can predict your outcome, your outcome. So write a program for 2 plus 2 in Python. What is the output you'll expect? 4. If you are running for your program for first time, you'll get output as 4. If you are running the same input with the same program, what is the output you will expect second time? You have the same input, you have the same program. What is the output you will expect for the second time? Same answer. Same answer, exactly. So, all your outputs are deterministic. This is called deterministic computation. This is called deterministic computation. But in quantum, if we have program to do 2 plus 2, first time it will give 4. Okay, as usual like a classical computer. Second time it will give 3. If you execute the same program with same input, it will give 2. Then for the fourth time, it will give 1. Okay. So each and every time your output differs, this is because of probabilistic computing. Probabilistic computing. Because quantum particle always in random motion. So all its computation become <coughs> random. Each and every time it will fetch random answer. So how will you believe a quantum computer in this case? Anybody know the answer? If each and every time quantum give different answer, how will you believe that system? So beauty is, okay, so if you run for 1000 times, suppose if you run for 1000 times, 80% of time it will give 4, 10% of time it will give 3, 5% of time it will give 2 and 5% of time it will give 1. So this is the beauty of quantum computation. To know the correct answer, we need to run multiple times. We cannot believe a single instance of quantum program. We need to run the same program with the same input for multiple times. If you are running for multiple times, you will get statistical data. You will get statistical data. So you may ask question for a simple thing doing 2 plus 2. Why we go for quantum instead of classical? In this case, quantum seem to be inefficient, particularly for addition program. But if you go for prime number factorization, prime number factorization, quantum will be efficient. If you change your problem domain, the entire scenario will get changed. Okay. So quantum will be applicable for wherever randomness involved, wherever random guess involved, wherever combination involved, okay, wherever permutation involved. Those problem you can go for quantum, not for every kind of problem. Okay. Suppose if you go for prime factorization, 
the classical algorithm will run for million times in that case thousand time is more than enough justifiable okay whenever you run sir the most number of time you will get amplitude for correct answer normal distribution always consider the peak that will be your correct answer most number of time you will get correct answer in case of quantum so, but then like you know like the common number of times we have to run it depends upon your algorithm it depends upon your input it is also about the number of yes sir number of samples it depends upon your problem complexity but generally it will be very less when compared to classical very less even 100 times 1000 times less so whenever you do measurement okay your amplitude will change into probability again your probability will change into binary value okay so this is what happens when you do measurement it forces qubit to make a decision either to go state 0 either to go state 1 so whenever you do measurement it loses its superposition state as well as before measurement you have multiple states multiple quantum states in the case of superposition and entanglement but when you do superposition sorry when you do measurement so this is an example for measurement this is an example for measurement when you do measurement you on, you only get classical output you will you will only get classical outcome so let us discuss with uh, gates normal gates we will discuss in order to refresh okay so as we know we have so many classical gates used for electronic circuit so gates will act like control uh, uh, technology so it contains one or two statements examined at each and every gate so according to the logic of gate it will get executed okay it passes depends upon the rules written over that gate and gate or gate not gate so each and every gate have their own rules okay so take an example of and gate in case of and gate if both statements are true then only it will generate true okay so one and one then only it will yield one okay if any one input is false automatically your output <coughs> become false so example not gate if any one of the input is true the outcome is also true okay so not gate is already we discussed in previous slide okay not gate is only reversible gate when compared to under okay so whenever you give true the output is false whenever the input is false the output is true so we have a different version in quantum logic gates we will see x gate x gate is nothing but not gate in classical okay so when you apply not gate when you apply not gate to state 0 it will turn into state 1 so i can see orange dot over here it is near to state 0 it means it lies in state 0 whenever you apply x gate this orange dot will move to state one it is nothing but quantum state so when you apply x gate from state one again it will move to state zero okay this we already covered in previous uh, uh, session the trick is when you apply not gate in superposition what happens anybody know answer for this if it is in pure state it will convert from 0 to 1 from 1 to 0 if it is in superposition same no sir not same i gave clue over there in the formula you look at this formula no no sir look at this formula alpha times 0 
plus beta times 1. Okay, when you apply not yet, these amplitude are interchanged. These amplitudes are interchanged. Beta will come to state 0 and alpha will come to state 1. I will show, sir. I will show. So click any place in sphere, any place in sphere, click X gate, it will alternate its values, alpha into beta, beta into alpha. So click near to zero, this is very near to zero, apply not gate, it will go near to state point. The amplitudes are exchanged. Okay, again click X gate, it will go near to state zero. So is it clear? Shall we move? Online participants, is it clear? Shall we move? Yes, sir. Great. Thank you. So here we are discussing in mathematical form. So next one is Z gate, we already discussed in previous session. So this will flip <coughs> between 1 and negative 1. Okay. From state 1, if you are applying Z gate, it will move to minus 1. From minus 1, if you are applying Z gate, it will go to state 1. But it will not do anything in state 0. So that is why we mentioned like this. From state 0, if you are applying Z gate, it will return as it is. From state 1, if you are applying Z gate, it will go to minus 1. Okay. From minus 1, if you are applying again Z gate, it will go to state 1. So it will only operate between 1 and minus 1. It will return state 0 as it is. Suppose if you apply Z gate in superposition, what happens? If you apply Z gate in superposition, compare with not gate, where it goes? Exactly. It will change the component of second state. So negative sign is introduced to Second signal, second state. So it is nothing but changing phase in your signal from positive cycle to negative cycle. Again apply Z gate from here. It will change sign alpha 0 plus beta 1. Then we will see about Hadamard gate. <coughs> From state 0, apply Hadamard gate, it will go to positive state. Positive state mentioned with 1 over root 2 state 0 plus 1 over root 2 state 1 equal to positive state. From 1, apply Hadamard gate, it will go to negative state which is nothing but 1 over root 2 state 0 minus 1 over root 2 state 1. So this is the example in circle, that is why positive and negative are at 90 degree, orthogonality. If it is in cube, sorry, if it is in sphere, it will be 180 degree. So according to the dimension, 
this degree will vary orthogonality will vary okay imagine if you apply hadamard gate in superposition <coughs> what happens <coughs> so it will create a new superposition state both your components are added both your components are negotiated it will exchange this value to state 0 and state 1 so if you want to apply a new superposition apply hadamard whenever possible so hadamard creates equal superposition from the pure states from mixed state it will create new superposition so the worthy point is from pure states from pure states apply hadamard <coughs> apply hadamard it will create equal superposition okay from mixed state from mixed state apply hadamard it will create new superposition so whenever if you have doubt what you can do you can go to the website click anywhere apply your gates to visualize so click any point over here apply hadamard it will go to new superposition state fine so next uh, we will cover important gate called control not gate so sometimes they will mention c not gate uh, it is the extension of control not gate okay so control not gate will act on two qubits x gate y gate z gate hadamard gate can apply on single qubit if you want to implement control not gate at least you need two qubits so c not gate is multi qubit gate okay sometimes they will ask question like this identify single qubit gate identify multi qubit gate then you need to know these differences okay so i will magnify this so control not gate acts on two qubits where it flips the second qubit if the first qubit value is one okay we will go through an example so this is your quantum circuit q1 and q2 we have two quantum gates and this solid dot you can see over here this solid black dot this is like tapping wire from q1 to q2 it is like a wire okay we are tapping so in q2 we have not gate so this not gate is activated by this wire if there is a control flow in q1 okay this is the logic yes sir i will mention this also this one is control this one act like a control this one act like a target whenever there is a control flow it will come down it will activate not gate so it will flip this bit states so initially it is in state 0 initially both qubits are in state 0 if it is in state 0 it will not have any control flow this control flow will not come down this will not enable this not gate this zero will retain zero as it is zero zero okay we will go through a simple truth table so case of q1 is zero q2 is zero because there is no control over here no control means it will not come down it will not activate zero retains zero as it is Zero retains zero as it is. Okay, first possibility. Second possibility, Q one is zero, Q two is one. So what it means? There is no control in Q one. Control will not come down. This will not enable uh, not gate. This value retain as it is. So state one, state zero, zero one. 
okay so look at the third possibility first qubit is state 1 second qubit is state 0 okay so one means there is control flow the control will go down it will enable not gate this state 0 is changed into state 1 so here state 1 here also state 1 so 1 1 okay so last example the first qubit is state 1 the second qubit also state 1 it means control will flow control will come down it will enable not gate the state 1 is negotiated to state 0 so here state 1 Here state zero. So whenever there is a control in Q one, it will flip Q two. You can see this pattern. So is it clear? Q two is impacted only in the case of one in Q one. Shall we move? Shall we proceed? <laughs> Online participant, shall we proceed? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> so we going to uh, recap about entanglement. If you are taking two quantum particles, if you are making strong correlation between them, so it will act together. So whatever happens for state uh, particle one. the same phenomena effect you can observe in particle 2 this is called equal correlation okay equal correlation it will act together like a absolute synchronization okay but what happens if you are making two particles in entangled stage you cannot describe individually you need to describe as the whole sum okay so after entanglement mathematically or physically you cannot sub, uh, you cannot describe individually okay so measuring one affects or decide the state of the other even the two particles are light away support we already discussed this okay this is about positive correlation so one more concept in uh, qubit we can do opposite correlation if one qubit point to state 0 the another qubit it can represent state 1 so whatever the principle you are using you are able to communicate without any difficulty anyhow you will know if you are changing qubit to state 0 the opposite will state to 1 if you are turning in 1 the opposite will be state 0 anyhow we are able to communicate like previous case but here it is when you are preparing qubits sir when you are entangled in opposite direction opposite direction possible this is also possible so in that way then there will be various forms of entanglement or only like similar and opposite there is forms there is forms so four possibilities are there that is called bell states in four ways you can do entanglement four <coughs> ways when you are preparing entanglement we are preparing in a laboratory uh, laboratory so we can actually like you know we can fix process. we can fix so i will skip this slide because it is more and more mathematical so this is the topic uh discussed about bell states so all scientists they observed entanglement phenomena in 1920 1930 1940 1930, but they are not able to understand the reason behind it they are not able to do demonstration okay for 60 to 70 years it's uh, stayed in a mystery they are not able to demonstrate this bell states okay so there is a scientist called john bell who invented a simple physical experiment to prove all four possible combination it is called bell states so he did bell experiment to prove this concept 
So entanglement can happen in four different states. 0, 0, 1, 1 or 0, 1, 1, 0. Opposite correlation. And we can do sign change. If it is positive correlation, plus sign will be there. If it is negative correlation or opposite signal, negative sign will be there. So, we will discuss uh, simple experiments in QuizKit. So, go to your QuizKit, if it is possible. So go to Composer. After login, go to Composer. So click uh, File, select New. You will get environment like this, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, C4. So you can add qubit or you can delete qubit. So what I do, I try to delete qubits. I try to maintain two qubits, try to maintain two classical bits. Okay. Two classical bits. Yes, sir. So this is thumb rule. This is not necessary. Okay. So what we do, drag and drop Hadamard gate in Q0, drag and drop Hadamard gate, it will enable two possibility for Q0. If you are running experiment for first time, it may generate zero for first time, second time it may generate one. So outcome is different for each run. Outcome is different for each run. Okay. Then what do you do? Try to drag and drop control not gate. Try to drag a control not gate. Okay. This will make entanglement between Q0 and Q1. This will make entanglement between Q0 and Q1. Yes, sir. Understanding gates is very, very important. Why we are writing programming to achieve some solution? How we are achieving solution? by doing movement in your quantum state. To do movement, we need to deploy gates. Actually, we are favoring for ourselves. We are making that movement to favor for the result. So here, uh, we are taking gate to the first qubit. Yes, sir. Second, we are taking control to not right? Yes, sir. So the first qubit, whatever they are not, that depends on the Yes, I, I, will, I will explain. So all qubits initialize to state 0. All qubits initially it is initialized to state 0. Okay. When you run this program for first time, suppose output of Hadamard is 0. Consider like this. Output of Hadamard is 0. 0 means there is no control flow. Control will not come down. This will not enable not gate. Okay. 0 state will retain 0. Here 0 state will retain 0. So if you do measurement, you will get value 0, value 0. This is what it means. Okay. For the same circuit, for the same circuit,
suppose if hadamard gate creates output as one this means it will create a control flow this control flow will, will come downwards this will enable not gate okay here you will get value state as one here also you will get state as one because this state zero now negotiated to state one so whatever happens for output of q0 it will impact the same way to q1 so this circuit will create entanglement between q0 and q1 okay this is the first possible bell state this is the first possible bell state we will do with a program we will do the same thing with program So this is the equivalent program in Quizkit. This is the equivalent program in Quizkit. Okay. If you give this program in your Quizkit, it will generate circuit like this. Okay. So I will share this coding in chat box. So you can copy this code. You are able to paste in your Quizkit notebook. I will tell step by step. So you can go lab from this uh, environment also. You can click lab near to composer. Sometimes you need to refresh multiple times. It will take some time. This is your lab environment, okay? Where you can go for Python code, you can create your quantum circuit using different approach. So whatever we discussed, we discussed in Composer. It is easy for beginners, but if you go for advanced level, we need to use lab, okay? Which used uh, Python code. So I'll share this code. I'll share this code in your biscuit uh, in the chat box. Check the chat box. What do you do? Go to file, create new. Create notebook or create biscuit notebook. Any way you can select. Go to file, go to new, select biscuit notebook, select biscuit notebook, and paste this code. Paste this code. Try to run. So select this play button. You can run. Okay, then what do you do? Click this plus sign. It will create a, another code. It will create another cell. So I will share this code. I will share this code.
if you run this code you will get output like this different output sir but we are not doing measurement we will get the same output so far in the measurement you will see the difference so first line represents we are calling a quantum circuit function okay for this function we are passing a parameter called 2 so this means we are creating two quantum bits two quantum bits so this function will create a circuit okay that object name is bell underscore one this is your object okay this object contains a quantum circuit with two qubits this is the meaning so this is line number two and line number two what we are doing we are implementing hadamard gate in q0 so look at this Q0 is your first quantum bit. In first quantum bit, we are implementing a Hadamard gate. So for that, so for that, we are doing bell underscore one dot H. Here dot means associative operator. Whatever the object you created, you are associating your Hadamard gate to that object. So that is why we, we put dot over here. So this will generate this part. This will implement Hadamard gate in, in your circuit in first qubit. In second qubit, we are putting dot CX 0, 1. We are creating a control knot. This can be control knot. Sometimes they call in short form C not gate. Sometimes they will call extended not gate. So multiple names are there. They, call, they can call in any form. Okay. Control not, C not or extended not gate. Everything represents same. Okay. So we are putting control not from where to where? From Q0 to Q1. From Q0 to Q1. So Q0 will act like a control q1 will act like a target so this is your whole circuit created with the help of bell underscore one okay. if you look at code i added one more line bell underscore one dot drop which will draw your circuit in your Quizkit notebook. Which will draw your circuit in Quizkit notebook. And you can see output like this. So in certification, they will ask how to visualize a circuit. Then you need to call this function. Then you need to select this answer. So in certification exam, you need to answer MCQ. They will give four choices. You need to select appropriate answer. Sometimes they will do trick in the command. They will give capital D. Okay. Sometimes they will give in between of draw. So they will change syntax. You need to know the syntax. You need to know the appropriate function. How to call your output. Okay. So go to the uh, library. Go to library. And from here, you are able to know what is the meaning of Quizkit. So Quizkit is a main library okay from this main library package we are importing modules quantum circuit is one of the module existing in quizkit main library transpile is one of the module which is existing in quizkit library okay. if you are looking second line quizkit dot visualization we are narrow down our import statement in the first line, we are importing modules. In second line, we are importing all packages related to visualization. That is why we are giving import star. Star means import all submodule exist in your package.
okay so this is how we are importing all our header files so next what we do i try to copy this code i will share with you <coughs> sir i have one doubt uh, yes, sir. can i ask yes sir yes sir in quantum circuit you are given mm -hmm. in code 2 comma 2 2 comma 2 but in the document it is only 2 which one is correct sir uh, 2 comma 2 also you can give okay so no here, issue observe here i'll mention 2 comma 2 means 2 quantum bits 2 classical bits you observe this okay. diagram you yeah. observe this diagram so, so you now can I see understand. 2 quantum yes sir yes yeah, one for the uh, uh, representing one for the uh, qubits, one for, one for class. uh, classical. Fine. Sometimes you can ignore your classical, you can run like this. Okay. But it is giving some uh, error. Mm, because I need to ah, run. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. yeah. Above one, we have run. Now we can run this. Because they are changing all versions. That is why we are getting error. Yes, we are getting same. Right. Now we are able to get only two. Only two quantum bits. But if you are including the second uh, parameter, it will include classical bits. We will see the measurement, right? Yes, sir. Ah, yes, fine. Okay, sir. So next, what we can do, we can import quantum state vector. We can import quantum state vector. So click plus symbol, click plus symbol, it will create a cell and run over here. So state vector is not defined. So try to search library for that. I will share this line in chat box. I will enable line number also. <coughs> yes. So line number one, we are importing state vector module from Whiskey Quantum Info package. Okay. So line number three, we are creating state vector from a label. So directly we are able to prepare quantum bits from the label. 0, 0 means your quantum circuit will point it to 0, 0. So this is another shortcut how to prepare your quantum bits through state vector. Now this is a function call. So from label is the function call. For that function we are passing 0, 0. From the label it will generate quantum state vector which is assigned to SV. This SV is an object. Okay? This object contains state vector <coughs> value. 0, 0. From state vector, we are evolving quantum state to the given circuit. So bell underscore 1 is the circuit we generated in previous code. We are passing that circuit to this quantum state vector. So whatever circuit is there, if you are giving for your state vector, it will change accordingly. It will change accordingly. Okay. So this will turn your circuit into the mentioned state vector. And we try to draw that state vector in the form of lattice. Okay, it will give in equation form. So this is the first bell state followed by uh, Hadamard gate to control now. So tell whether this code is working. Shall we move to next example? If you have any doubt, you can ask within this code. So that code, you can uh, give it in chat box. Okay, okay. So that we can practice. I share this code, sir. You check in your chat box. 
I shared. Once again, I will share. Otherwise, I will share this notebook. After uh, this, uh, today, I will share in mail. The coordinators will distribute you. <coughs> Fine. So this is an example for uh, first build state. Okay. So next, we try to add a Z gate after your Hadamard. Now tell me what happens in Q0. Try to recall the previous session. Try to recall the previous session. So all qubits are initialized to state 0. All qubits initially in Qiskit initialized to state 0. From 0, if you apply Hadamard gate, where it will go? From 0, sir, apply Hadamard gate. It will go to positive state. So it will go to positive state. Okay. From positive state, apply Z gate, it will go to negative state. It will go to negative state. Okay. If you are giving negative state signal to your uh, control node, okay. If Hadamard is uh, producing zero, this will add up with negative state. From zero, it won't do anything. But from one, it will add a phase shift. From one, it will add a phase shift. If that phase shift comes down, okay, you will get zero. You will get zero if it is the case of zero. You will get one and you will get minus one. Exactly, sir. So that is why the second component you will get minus. Seven. Only we are adding Z gate after Hadamard, which will turn the entire combination. One after other. So is it clear? Shall we move to next one? If you have doubt, you can ask me. Sir, please repeat once again, sir. So yes, sir. I will. Till I will after do. Z gate, we are clear that it is kind of. I will do, sir. I will do. Yeah, I will do weeks. Because I know it is little complex. Okay. So imagine we have Hadamard gate and Z gate compared to the previous circuit. Okay. So all quantum circuit initialized to state zero by default in Piskit. Okay. From zero, apply Hadamard gate, it will go to positive state. Remember the previous session before afternoon, we discussed in block sphere. From zero, apply Hadamard gate, it will go to positive state. From positive state, apply Z gate, it will go to negative state. Okay. So there are two possibility for your Hadamard. The first possibility, it will create state zero. Sorry, output zero. Output zero means from output zero, if you apply Z gate, it will retain as it is. From state one, if you apply Z gate, it will go to negative one. So this signal have impact in your output. Okay. So first case zero means zero as it is. Second case state one means minus one state. So that is why we are getting this combination. Still, if you are not clear, I will show that block sphere once again. So we will go to block sphere. Then you are able to understand what I mean. So observe here, it is in stage zero. Apply Z gate, nothing is happened. Okay. So apply one, then apply Z gate. You can see, you can see change in your face. I can hide this. You can see change in face. Again, apply Z gate. 
the phase will come to stage zero. Sorry, phase zero. You can see downside. So Z gate introduce phase shift apart from stage zero. Apart from stage zero. So click zero, apply Z gate. You can see nothing. But click state one, apply Z gate. It will introduce a phase shift. <coughs> This is what we are doing with the help of Z gate. Stage zero, apply Hadamard, apply Hadamard, apply Z gate. You can see it will go to negative state. Are you able to get sir? From zero, apply Hadamard, it will come to positive state. Then apply Z gate, it will go to negative state. Yes sir, understood sir. We can move forward. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. This is how negative component is introduced for second uh, combination. Then we will move to Bell state 3. Here we are doing a little trick. We are doing a little trick. We are implementing NOT gate in Q1. If we are implementing NOT gate in Q1, what is the output? One. So if first qubit is zero, the second qubit will be one. If first qubit is one, the second qubit will be zero. Here we are making opposite correlation. Are you able to understand? I will share this code. I will share this code. Is just uh, just trying this kit. Here we are making opposite correlation. Okay, so build state four. Build state four. We are adding a Z gate for build state three in Q one output. After control not gate, we are adding Z gate. So what it will do? It will introduce a phase flip. After your opposite correlation, it will do phase flip after your opposite correlation. So for John Bell, they awarded Nobel Prize because of this demonstration. Because of this simple demonstration, they awarded Nobel Prize. Because it is very uh, confusing. Explaining build state, demonstrating build state is very, very confusing. Scientists waited for 60 years, 70 years to prove this. So if you have any doubt, you can ask me. We can go for 10 minutes break. Then we will come back. Okay. So exactly. Sir, can you, sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Uh, sir, one uh, question. Yes, I am sir. teaching a, uh, ADDC, Analysis of Design of Digital Circuits. Okay. 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 There is a quote. What quote says, we are all uh, analog beings living in a digital world, future quantum computing. Yes, sir. Sir, every signal in this universe existing in analog form. Even analog. digital signal in the form of yeah. analog. It is our interpretation analog. only. Yeah. Sir, there one, is... uh, this one, sir, one. Mm -hmm. uh, since I am teaching digital, can okay. I uh, make my students to work on uh, quantum computing some experiential learning co component, EL component that you know, no? We give yes, assignment, some marks uh -huh. which carries. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In what way we can uh, trigger their mindset if I want to give some topics in quantum company, whatever you explained beautifully. Sir, sir what, what, I way... suggest, huh? what I suggest, I will share one interesting link. Okay, sir. 
I'll share one interesting link. So go to this website, analog ah. computer thing. Ah. Analog computer thing. Is my screen is visible? Yeah, visible, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir, I mean, I, I online. I am an online participant. Yes, sir, online participant. So yeah. go to analog thing, Anabrit. Ah. It is a company in French or Germany. They created ah. analog computer. Okay. So this computer costs 33,000. If you are applying for academic version, you can mm. do all analog computation. It is an analog computer, actually. It okay. is very, uh -huh. very faster when compared to digital. Is it? But today we are you what we are using all digital computer, no, sir? Digital. Yes, sir. We are stuck with digital computer. Actually, mm. we can use analog computer way better than digital. Oh, okay. Uh. Way better than digital. So using this computer, go to this mm. website, you can explore what are the experiments we can do. Mm. So it is very interesting to know. We are missing so okay. much of things. Okay. We can use neuromorphic A, which is a very dynamic field. Mm. We can do modeling of dynamic system. Chemical reaction we can do. We can okay. simulate. Okay. This is not possible in digital computer. Even though if mm. you have supercomputer, you cannot do these experiments. Mm. Mm. You see, sir. Yeah, you yeah. You can simulate market economics. You can do population dynamics, chemical reaction, mechanical mm. system. These okay. things are not possible in digital. Mm. But is it used in the real time recent days? Sir? They are using, sir. Now yeah. the analog yeah. computer become uh, an existence. Okay. They are doing so but, much. Uh, sir, one, uh, as you said, uh, but uh, we please, say always. After, after the question and answer, sir? can we have a tea break for uh, 15 minutes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can have tea break. Then we can join. But just note this website. I will share this link. Okay. If, okay, you, are, if you are teaching analog side by side, students will get more excited. I will share. I will share each and everything. So we join it. We join it. Three twenty-five. Actually, one day is not enough to talk all this stuff.
Hi all. We can start our session. Is my slide visible? Shall we start? Is my slide quantum algorithm visible to you? Shall we start? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So most of the quantum algorithm deal with signal processing. So we see each and everything like a signal interference. Okay. So from the quantum computing, we are able to know the global property. If you have a quantum algorithm, it uses a global property of the values existing in the qubit, which will change their amplitude. So this is the concept we try to look for to do our calculation. So most of the time, what we are doing, we try to reduce the amplitude of wrong answer. We try to introduce the, uh, uh, increase the amplitude of correct answer. We are doing the same thing uh, side by side. Okay. So whenever you got correct answer, try to increase its amplitude by adding the same uh, wave pattern. Okay. Like interference. So the first example is uh, a dash Joshua algorithm, which is very simplest form of algorithm. <coughs> we'll discuss how it is working. The problem is who am I? Okay, this is the basic question of this problem. Okay, if your function is given to you, f of x, your input could be either zero or one. Your output could be either zero or one. Okay, you don't know what type of function it is. Either that function can be a constant, either that function can be a balanced one. Okay. You will see uh, what is the meaning of constant and balance. Take an example of uh, f of x. Whatever the input you are giving, it will always give zero. Okay. So whatever the input you are giving, if it always give one, it means your function is a constant one. Irrespective of your input, your output always remains same. Okay. In the case of balanced, in the case of balanced, so whatever the input if you are giving, it will give x. For the same input, it will negotiate with previous <coughs> output. So each and every time, it will contradict with your previous output. If it is so, it is called equally balanced function. Okay. We will see with the simple example, you are able to understand. So look at this example. f of 0 equal to 0. Okay. f of 1 equal to 0. Irrespective of your input, it is giving 0 as a constant output. Okay. Second case, f of 0 equal to 1 and f of 1 equal to 1. Again, irrespective of your input, you are getting always output as one. If it is so, you can determine it is a constant function. In the right side, you can observe f of 0 equal to 0. Okay, it is going out of zoom. Okay, so f of 0 equal to 0 and f of 1 equal to 1. Here, your input are contradictory your output also contradictory. You can understand this. But look at third statement, f of 0 equal to 1. In first statement, f of 0 equal to 0. 
but here f of 0 equal to 1 which is contradictory. Each and every time it will contradict with your previous output. Okay. So to know whether a function is constant or balanced, at least you need to run twice in your classical computer. Without running twice, you are not able to determine type of your function. This is the problem we are facing to identify constant or balance. But in quantum, you are able to tell in a single run. So it is like a magic. If you ask a quantum Oracle function, it will say result within a single run. Okay. So this algorithm is proposed by David Dodge in 1990s. So this will give a very first template about how quantum algorithm can be good at mathematical abstraction. Okay. So you can use this algorithm to classify about the functions. So we'll see how this function works. So we discussed already about Hadamard gate operation. Okay. So X is our input, Y is our axillary input. So it is acting like a supportive uh, qubit. Okay. Sometimes they will call it as a ancilla qubit. So I'll mention actually X is your original input. So this is your original input. This is your additional, additional or supportive or ancilla qubit, ancilla qubit, which will help you to identify what type of function it is. That is called ancilla input. So this is the function which is given for you. You don't know what type of function it is, whether it is constant or balanced, you need to identify with the help of two qubits. Okay. Your input, input could be 0, 1. Here your input could be 0, 1. Here your, your output could be 0, 1. Okay. So from 0, if you apply Hadamard, where it goes? From 0, if you apply Hadamard, where it goes? Imagine the previous session from zero. If you apply Hadamard, where it goes? To the positive state. Okay. From one, if you apply Hadamard, it will go to negative state. It will go to negative state. So, according to your function, you will get different output. You will get different output. Suppose if your function is constant, it will give a positive value. From positive value, again, if you are applying Hadamard gate, it will go to zero state. Suppose if your function is balanced, it will give negative state. From negative state, if you are applying Hadamard, it will go to state one. By differentiating this input and output, you are able to classify your function. This is the logic of Dye Joshua algorithm. So input qubit x equal to 0, helper qubit y equal to 0. If you apply Hadamard, it will set them in equal superposition, but it in different q sphere places. One in positive, one in negative. Okay, we are giving contradictory input. Equal superposition will generate randomness. So that is why Hadamard gate is initial gate which will introduce quantumness, randomness in every quantum algorithm. Okay. So whenever you don't know where to start, whenever you don't know, you need to know random guess, you can go for quantum. In case of combination problem, in case of uh, permutation problem, you can go for quantum. Not all types of problem. 
So Oracle function f returns 0 if it is constant, 1 if it is balanced. A single measurement at the end will reveal type of your function. <coughs> So again, we have some mathematical background. Uh, this is very easy, I think so. If you understand XR get operation, you can understand this. So we have four scenarios, f of x equal to zero, f of x equal to one, stands for constant, f of x equal to x, and f of x equal to not of x. It means it will contradict with previous output. So you can see. It is balanced. Okay. And can anybody say what is the meaning of XR gate? Online participants. What is the meaning of XR gate? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. When both are you same. Asked uh, exactly. Zero, sir. exactly. You are asking a, a truth table, function function. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. XR gate. A B bar plus B A bar. Okay. A B bar plus B into A B A bar A bar. Correct, no? Okay. So if both inputs are same, it will return zero. 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 If zero. Any, one becomes one. Any input is varies, it will give one. So yeah. it will give whether the input are same or different. So XR gate used to determine whether input combination are same or different. So simple explanation of XR like this. So take an example of case one, f of x equal to zero. Do this calculation. Okay. So x equal to zero, y equal to one. Do XR one with zero. Your f of x is equal to zero. So what is XR of one with zero? What is XR of 1 with 0? It's 1, sir. Actually, 1. So, 1 XR of 0, it will give 1. Okay. So, go to the second case. Go to the second case. <coughs> Look at the second combination. Y equal to 1. 1 XR with 0. Again, you will get answer as 1. Okay. Third combination y equal to 0, okay, f of x equal to 0, so 0, x are 0, inputs are same, we will get output as 0, okay. Fourth case, 0, x are with 0, y is value 0, f of x equal to 0, 0, x are with 0, you will get 0. Are you able to get this truth table? Is it clear? Is it clear? Shall we move? Not X. So here input is Y and F of X. X will act like a reference for us. Is it clear? So X will retain as it is, but your output is determined by Y with your F of X. You need to do XR operation. So second case, f of x equal to 1. So in second case, f of x equal to 1. Okay. So do xr of 1 with 1. Here the value of y is 1. f of x equal to 1. What is the output? You predict? f of x is a function, sir. Function of x. So f of x always equal to 1. Constant. Either 0 or 1. In first case, all f of x are 0. In this case, all f of x are 1. So 1, x are of with 1, give 0. Okay. So do like this. Four possible combination. You will get output like this. So notice the difference between the first output and the second output. First two cases, you will get 1-1. One, one. In second case, you will get 1-1 one, one at plus two combinations. Inputs are similar, you will get zero. Yes, sir. Inputs are different, you will get 
no for the same combination we are getting the output in different patterns okay it means you are able to differentiate between two cases like not gate in not gate how we are able to do reverse computation because we are able to differentiate your output pattern same here we are achieving in different ways that is why we shuffled input pattern it is not 00011011 we shuffled our input pattern purposefully is it clear for uh, online audience shall we move are you able to understand first two cases hello am i audible okay sir thank you thank you so what we do what we do take the third case so before third case you observe your output observe your output the output of first case you put not get after that you will get output of second case apply not get for your first case output you will exa exactly get output of second case okay so case 3 f of x equal to x here you can consider your x here you can consider your x x x r with y it will give one okay so x equal to 1 y equal to 1 do x r both are same answer is 0 so 0 x r with 0 it will give 0 One x r with zero, it will give one. So this output is entirely different from previous two cases. So this will equal to your control not C not G. Whenever there is one component in X, it will negotiate your Y component. You can see pattern over here. You can see pattern over here. Whenever X equal to one, it will negotiate your Y value in your output. otherwise it will retain your y value otherwise it will retain your y value as it is okay so this will act like a control not in the fourth case what you have to do you need to create a x dash column so x x dash y y x r of f of x so do like this so do like this uh, x x dash so x x dash x dash and y and y x r of f of x okay first case 0 1 0 2 0 3 One. Okay. What is the x dash? One zero one zero. Okay. What is the combination of y? One one zero zero. Okay. Do x r with x dash and y. What will get? Zero. Zero one will get one. One zero will get one. Zero zero will get zero. so this output contradict with case number 3 are we are you able to see from the output are you able to see from the output online participants uh, please answer is it clear so if you are putting not get for your case 3 output you will get exactly for case 4 output like previous example so this is called reverse c not get this is called reverse c not get so we established a not get like pattern we are able to differentiate your input and output pattern in each and every case 
which is very unique. If we are able to differentiate, we are able to do reversible computation. Clear, sir? Here we are doing x dash. x dash with y, you will get your result. Okay? So, case 3 output, you put not get for your case 3 output, you will get output for case. Actually, there is no charge. Sir. No charge. So these are all mathematical explanation. So we discussed first algorithm called Dodge Joshua algorithm. Next we can see Grover's algorithm, little interesting algorithm. And this is one of the important algorithm which is uh, uh, created by a Indian scientist. So the scientist name is Low Grover. So go for this algorithm. Okay, this algorithm used to do unsorted search. So if you have unsorted data, you can apply this algorithm to find appropriate answer. So this problem is like finding a needle in a haystack. Okay, this is the given problem. If you want to find a small needle from the entire haystack, what technique you will use? What technique you will use sir, to find a small needle out of the haystack? We can use uh, magnet. Exactly, we can use magnet. We need to search one by one part. After a certain amount of time, we are able to identify. So we'll use the same familiar classical approach. Each and every uh, haystack part, we need to search. If it is the given list, okay. So T is the item we need to find. So what is the best try we need to do? At least we need to search half of your element. Either Either you will get this part of your answer or next part of your list. Okay. In the worst case, if T exists in last position, you need to search until your last element. So this is the worst case. So in Groover, in Groover, within root 10 times, you are able to find the needle in your unsorted search within root 10 tries. No need to search for 100 element. So root 100 will get answer within 10 times. If you are running for 10 times, you are able to identify your answer. Okay, very different approach we are using. It will reduce a million operation into only 1000 times. So exponentially it is faster when compared to classical algorithm. So again, uh, this lies on amplification. We are using amplification technique in two different ways. In two different ways. When you run a quantum algorithm, it will give answer in different possibilities. So answer will contain correct part, wrong part, some mixed part. But whenever you find right answer, you need to increase its amplitude. So here, yellow will act like a correct answer. Whenever you find wrong answer, you need to reduce its amplitude. This is the goal of each and every quantum algorithm. Okay. So common technique we are using to identify correct answer. I will tell sir, we will discuss. 
So initial step, what we have to do, we need to take our inputs. Qubits will reduce 50% of your input when compared to classical because single qubit will represent two data. So classically, if you have 100 bits, you need only 50 qubits to represent your data. So your input size is reduced into half. Okay. So each and every item, you can represent with 2 power n qubits with the help of superposition. So try to start your search. Whenever your algorithm find that element, it will return one as the result. Whenever your function identify that particular given element, it will return one. If your item is not found, it will return zero. If you are running for first time, it may give correct answer, it may give wrong answer. You cannot believe your quantum algorithm because it will act very randomly. In a single instance, you cannot find correct answer. So what we do? We try to do inverse phase. We try to do inverse phase. Whenever you find correct answer, try to flip that signal to the opposite side. So how we are achieving this? By multiplying with minus 1 to the power f of x. So this function will act like an alternator function. So whenever you find correct answer, <laughs> multiply with minus 1 to the power f of x, it will flip your signal. Okay. After flipping, what you do? You should not do measurement because we cannot believe quantum algorithm in a single run. We need to wait for some time. Okay. What we have to do? We need to do average. If you are doing average, it will reduce the wrong answer amplitude size. So this is what happens if you do average. After average, you reflip the same signal to the opposite side. Now you can easily obviously see your correct answer amplitude will be slight higher than the wrong amplitude. We need to do the same process again and again. In the first instance, it will give the signal. In second instance, it will give some signal. But if you are running for multiple times, only the highest value will get increased. This is the logic. So initially, it will give any signal. But if you run for 10 times, obviously, the signal strength will be higher. So how many times we need to do? It depends upon root 10 times. So if you do for root 10 times, ultimately, the correct answer amplitude will be so taught. The wrong answer amplitude will be so negligible. When you do measurement, you will get correct answer. So even though it will look like a fluke, but it will act in this way. So this is another example of uh, Grover algorithm. Okay, likewise, we have uh, multiple example, Shor algorithm. So we don't have time. I will share this material. So this algorithm will break all classical cryptography. This algorithm will factorize the given prime numbers. Okay. So I will wind up this session. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask me. Uh, hello, sir. It's Savitri here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, basically, my research, I start like I want to work on QCNN models for the images. So, okay. I'm finding difficulty in like identifying the particular resource where I, where I could analyze properly and uh, create my own model. So, what I do, ma'am, I will share quantum image processing. So, uh, this will act like a tool for image processing. I will share that link in chat box. Okay, sir. Thank you. Because everything they shuffle, they updated whole uh, software. Little difficult to search. I try to search. Sure, sir. Thank you. I got that link. I will share in chat box. 
So go to this link. You can uh, see quantum image processing. Okay, sir. But, uh, we can refer the same for quantum machine learning, sir. It's, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it same or for that it is anything is different? Uh, sir, for classification, you can use Grover algorithm. You can use uh, Dodge Joshua algorithm. Okay. But it is like a toy problem. It is like okay. a toy problem. We need to adapt this technique for our algorithm. It will take so much of time. Okay. So converting a classical algorithm in quantum version, it will take a lot of time. Okay, sir. Okay, thanks. So uh, you already come across these kind of classification problems that is solved in quantum uh, side? Have you? But uh, the thing is, the result will not be uh, appreciable because we are doing a toy level. Okay, we can sir. do analysis and we can do comparison. Comparison. Okay. So because uh, hardware is not evolved, Okay. And do empirical studies. We okay. Can do empirical studies. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any other doubt? If you if you want to ask me, you can ask me. Otherwise, I will give my uh, social network. So you can connect with me. If you have any query, you can connect contact with me at any point of time. So I'll share to everyone. Is my link visible? In chat box, please check. Yes. So if you have any doubt, you can contact me. I will post more and more relevant, uh, relevant information more frequently. So you will not miss any notification in this uh, quiz kit. I thank organizer, I thank online participant, offline participant, uh, I thank BMS College of Engineering for giving this opportunity. Thank you all. Hello, sir, are you available? Hello. Okay. Hello? Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bala. So, sir, is available, sir? No, I think uh, session got over. Okay, fine, sir. Okay, then. Thank you. So, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, tomorrow at that... 10 o'clock session starts at 10 o'clock ah uh, okay okay sir session or some others it's an pardon no sir uh, it's taken by the same one uh, the same no no no, no no all all days different uh, speakers okay sir okay so oh. we want that uh, uh, collab notebook to run that's why i want to mention it no no i think tomorrow uh, expert will tell so everyone are uh, expert in the quantum only okay, so we will have a uh, different perspective thank you yeah fine thank you very much thank you sir thank you thank you sir. thank you so i thank i thank jay kumar dr jay kumar for the wonderful session today on quantum introduction so i request our hod to please facilitate the expert photo with the coordinators please bani 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 all of it please elru bani photo ha one nimsha somebody will call to take one photo Uh, partic participant if you are live uh, can we have the face on video on we can take one photo adidvi off aitu alla screenshot tagon please ha ha idu ee photo will just take yeah take one photo manish thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you thank you participants you can log out today we can start uh, tomorrow by exactly at 10 o'clock thank you very much